Well, I'll buy it. We back at you again, like we said, for that next installment. You know how we do it. Me and 15 to teach 24 hours a day, man. We took turns one day to 22 hours. We back up in this joint, man. We back. And we in full effect. We taking this YouTube by storm. Never have it been made so clear of what people is about and what they all got going on. But we back for another topic. Why do God need worship? And the beings who want to worship. Bow before me. I'm your God, Almighty Ra, Almighty Enlil. All money in live, bro. We about to get him in the building. 15 elder. It don't stop. It don't quit, man. We still putting it out and making it happen. Let me get that thumbnail loaded up, and then we're going to get cracking, man. We're going to bring the 15 back in, bro. Okay, 15 is already in there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Boom, boom, we got that thumbnail. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, we hey. back, man. We back up and hot and running. All right. You know, I'm in the I'm in the uh, warehouse right now, so. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, let you, yeah, you know. I can start it off. I can start, start it off. With, what's the, what's the, what's it on again? What they come it's up with? why God need worship. And we oh, talk okay. about the beans, the beans that utilize uh, religious uh, instruments to control people and get them to worship them uh, mm -hmm. in a sort of kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to yeah, go so, in on that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, it is a lot of beings out here that's doing it. And you got to bow before me. I am almighty Jaffa Jorah, big ball Sam. You got to bow. Now, uh, show enough, you know. Show enough niggas. You know what I'm saying? We got some show enough. Hey, we got to keep it clean, you two. We got some show enough cats out here that, that want you to bow down and kiss my shoes, sucker. You know what I'm saying? Niggas like that, man. And they taking advantage of people who got minds who are not as intelligent as us. You know what I'm saying? Us on the line right now. It's, it's the people out here. You got to keep in mind that there's a lot of people out here that would be would be classified as mentally retarded but we're not making fun of those people because they don't mean that they uh they don't mean that they not intelligent uh it, it just that means that they they can be taken advantage of more than a regular person based on their their uh the electromagnetic frequency in their brain or the receptors Hold on, let me get switch to this laptop so we can get the uh, thumbnail pulled up. The receptors in their brain is not firing like on all cylinders like a normal person would be. So some. Well, I bought my bad for the switch. Certain things they might not catch on to the other people catch on, and then and so it's bees out here, and then they they coming out of religion. So it's bees out here that know that, and they take advantage of that, and they say, "Oh yeah, this person uh, is is slow." So what I'm gonna do is I'm on, uh, I'm, I'm Jesus, huh? I'm uh, you know somebody somebody big, uh, uh, not even you got beans that do it different. You got they, they got they, they really pimps. It's a lot of pimps, pimps that they converted over to religion, and they really pimping in the religious game. They really, they really uh, drug dealers. They, because like I told you, uh, these people, uh, when somebody is, ah, oh God, and ooh, they doing all that, and they got the organ and everything going in the background, that's to stimulate certain signals in your brain to give, make you feel, to release certain ceremonies 
uh, hormones in your brain, like dopamine, serotonin, right? Uh, you know, and it depends on how they talk and shit. They could be releasing estrogen in a woman and test uh, when a man, like, you know, before somebody go to war, uh, you got these guys that stand in front of the, the military and they give a speech, right? They, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to fight. You know, they they, they get the niggas riled all up so they can increase increase a particular uh, emotion in their brain, testosterone. They want to build up the testosterone by giving them a motivational speech. And this creates a thing that we call, um, uh, uh, what's the term that I can use for it? Um, it's called fanaticism. That's what we call it, but it's another term too. But I just say fanaticism. This creates for like people like that dude that get in front of the crowd and he then uh, he he might be a sucker that after he say all that stuff he run to the back and get on the horse and stand back while all the niggas run in the battle i didn't see it right this nigga get up he give a a, a motivational speech increase t- increase the testosterone in the whole group of guys get them ready to die for their families and and their country and things and then he step back and say, "Yeah, let them." Uh, then he send them, send them off, right to battle. This is all form of worship. It's all form of worship. Like people, pe- like people can they they sacrifice people in this worship uh, arena without even knowing it. Especially uh, in some of the fanatical uh, religions, like uh, they say Islam is fanatical, or uh, especially in the Eastern where, uh, where they with these guys, these Luciferians, really, is what they really are. Luciferians dress up like Muslims and then say they Muslims and then they go, uh, you know, bomb a place or, or whatever, right? Whatever the case may be. Ba- based on their God, the worship of their God. They feel like they worshiping their God when they blow up some niggas. That's got to be another type of thinking that just got to go out. You know what I'm saying? It's got to go that type of thing. got to go out. A nigga think because if he blows uh, uh, ten people up and babies and shit, that his God gonna give him seventy virgins in heaven. Now that type of like the people that go for that, let's think about it and think about the manipulation of uh, what can happen, man, with the worship. Now I can get into a higher level of the worship part. Originally, the worship was triggered down from a group of reptilian beings who needed the energy. They needed energy to gain power. People gain power from you worshiping them. You might not believe that. People gain power. They gain, they name blow, get bigger. And more people come to worship it, worship them because a whole group, another group of people is worshiping them and saying that they this person or that person, right? And then once them people seeing it, this do, and then don't let them being able to do some magician work. Don't maybe let them be have a little magician background where he know how to, you know, pull a handkerchief out of his sleeve or something. Right? Fifteen be showing these funny ass videos, boy, uh, on on his page. You gotta go go to subscribe to Fifteen page. He be showing these funny videos of what they be doing. But I'm Africans. They don't. They, they don't. They don't do no illusionary uh, effects or nothing. They one on one video, they were pulling a nigga up with a sheet straight through the roof. I said, if people will go for that, I mean, if people don't see, and then he telling everybody, oh God, are the angels of God pulling them up into heaven. Man, geez, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's just crazy, man. I saw a dude, I saw a dude that they do this, they go around in Africa to different areas of Africa. Facts. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. This is <laughs> I agree. Well, man, I'm cracking up laughing. Yeah, you go ahead, though. I'm telling man, you, man. I just like, want to let you know I'm still with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. These, these niggas, because like, the videos you're dropping are funny because it, it, it's dealing with what we're talking about right now about the worship and how it's being used as a money tool to really pimp our people, man. To pimp our people and, fi- and keep us scared up and all in fear. But in, in, uh, it's, in Africa, it's this one preacher. He got like a Hollywood act going on. He got these two, three people that he that they come in and say they possessed by a demon. And he talked to them and asked them where they from. And they say, oh, I'm from Jupiter. And uh, uh, I want to, I came here and I'm all about it. I want to eat some ass. That's what I'm out of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
crazy shit. Go ahead. You want to go ahead? You better say something. Too. No, no. I was laughing. I was agreeing with you and laughing, big bro. Yeah, man, with they, you they, 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 he, he, he throw water on them like and they, they wiggle on the ground and go crazy like a demon. Like he casting the demon <laughs> off of for five or ten minutes and then they get up like they normal and walk off and then he make everybody put ten dollars in his plate after that. That's ain't nothing but fucking <laughs> magic. Like that's the highest form of magic right there. I've never seen. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, the highest form of magic I ever seen yeah. is the uh, f- uh, film industry. That's the highest form of manipulation, of right? Visual, right. visual manipulation I've seen, where they take the computer graphics, the CG uh, effects, and they create an optical illusion for us to enjoy, and we don't complain about it because we enjoy it. When I went to see Black Adam. You think I didn't enjoy the graphic detail and the CG? All the animators and the producers got together, formulated that great magical scene of this dude with phenomenal imaginary powers that ain't no man on this planet going to have without the help of robotic function. (laughs) So I'm looking at him going, we got strongman contest. We know the limits of human strength from size, from smallest to biggest. So when they make these movies, they're to put us in a trance. And I I think that uh, entertainment industry, they literally call each movie a program. They call each show a program. Smack dab right in our faces, letting us know we're programming your brain. And we watch it. So that, along with the Bible, like religion is the, the strongest and then there's the entertainment. That's what I saw. I would say that's just my, you know, my perspective on it. But I'm not, you know, not saying yours is over, uh, over rude or anything. All right, you can go ahead, big bro. I'm about to go. Hey, hey, hey! I gained all the perspectives. I gained all the perspectives. I, I add whatever you got to add. I, I don't like I say, ain't no right or wrong with me. I gain what you say. I take it in and I add it to what I what I think too. So I, I ain't no right and wrong with me. People get mad at me because we, uh, you know, he don't. He's always agreeing with everybody. Why don't he fight him? Why don't he punch him in the mouth? They want to see a battle. People want to see thriller. They want thrill. They want action. They want the TV with the TV tone. Thrill, action, drama. Uh, what's the other one they got? Suspense. They want suspense. You know, they want I like, like uh 15. Like you probably right. see this a lot. You probably see this a lot. Uh and, and it's still dealing with it. Some people like I, I like like when it be a traffic jam, it'd be a wreck on the other side of the road. And if people it's a traffic jam on the opposite side of the road, how's that happening? Because people want to see blood, they want to see guts. They want to pass by Facts. subliminally and see some something somebody did or somebody flew out the window. They want to see it so they can say, "Oh, I'm glad that ain't me." You know, I'm glad I'm alive. I'm, I'm glad I'm. You know, it's weird, man. It's, it's they they program this. They program this. Now uh, another thing about wor- uh, worship. Here come this dude. Another thing about wor- uh, worship and these, these beings that's taking advantage, like it's a whole bunch of beings saying they Jesus, right? Uh, I'm right. Jesus, or I'm this Messiah, or I'm this God, or I'm this leader, this this uh, whatever they call title they might have, right? They got all these titles. I'm a bishop. That's the one I hate right there. Oh, I'm a bishop. Uh, I ain't just no pastor. I'm a bishop. Like that's supposed to make him over, you know. Oh, yes, he, uh, and then somebody say, oh, that's my bishop. He's a, he ain't a pastor. He's a bishop. And you talk with him and figure out that he don't even know his own damn Bible. <laughs> talk with him. He don't even know his own damn book. He talking some philosophy shit that he just gets some pimping, some pimping. Exactly. It's a pimping, man. So we got beings out here calling themselves Jesus, and they still promoting the Jesus doctrine after we done already dispelled all the religion. And they still going and saying, you see, see, they misleading the people when they tell you uh, Jesus is the sun in the sky. Uh, Jesus is uh, dealing with all these uh, Bibles dealing with astronomy. 
they misleading you. See, they, they gonna make you go to hell. See, see, they demons. See, they, they fallen angels. See, it's always fear tactics to keep and uh, worship people that won't worship. They use fear to trap you into that box. You got to be going to a square. Uh, worship is, is only one square. And in order to trap you in that square, they use fear. It's always you going to hell. Uh, God going to get you. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. Like my wife, she do a lot. When I say, oh, yeah, your God in there, man, we got him on tape smoking dope. Here, like. Yo, like, how you gonna tell me uh, uh, that hit, get hit in my shit is bad when your own God, your Yahweh, is the nigga that brought it here for us to hit it? <laughs> your Yahweh. I'll tell you, I got pictures of the nigga, man. They puffing, passing that shit. In Lil and uh, uh, I don't know who that was. In the, it might have been Inky, look like in the picture with him. They was passing the joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So God fucks with the burning bush. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. So, but what I, what I want to get into uh, on the worship thing is that when, like me, I don't want the nobody like me. Even though I say I'm Haru, and that's it, resonate with my DNA and my energy feel, and I and I could just I, it resonate. I know it's me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even though I say like I don't want nobody to worship me because of it. And I and and I I think that there's more that energy can resonate in more than one being, it, it, uh, and it's actually two Harus. People don't know that it's Haru the elder and Haru the uh, young elder. Haru the old elder is Hathor and Ra's son, and the uh, in the the god ancient god Egyptian god teachings. And then you got Osiris and Osiris son, which is but it's, you know it can get we can get into the symbology of that too, uh, which is the uh, the young Haru. Um, so it's two different Harus. People don't know that. And and both of them was breastfed. Both of them, uh, both of them, well, Haru, the second Haru was born by a magical conception. And then the other, the Haru, so it's two different things. People don't know that. You know what I'm saying? That's why they got two different headdresses. One's got a stepstone. That's Isis headdress. And then the other one's got what we just talked about with the horns and the sun disc in the middle. Right? But, you know, what worship, Worship came from, uh, let, me, let me break it down to how it started. All right, so when these beings came here, uh, I'll, I'll just break it down on the goal uh, format where well, Satuk. All right, so in order for you to be a God, you got to have somebody that needs you. That's why we say, why do God need worship? So uh, God need worship in order for him to be God. If he didn't have the worship, he wouldn't be God. Because they tell y'all that they, you give your power over to this. You give your energy. You can give energy over to a being. You can give your energy over to a being. In, in the same format, like 15th just explained when he, when the man gives his energy over to the woman, really. Really, when the man ejaculates into a woman, he really, his legs can go weak. Depends on how good he handled his business. His legs might go limp. I know some cats that get up and they fall around the ground after they get through uh you know releasing the energy right the uh semen they they legs are weak uh i know boxing 15 might can attest to this they tell you uh i know some people that still do it they just they freaks of nature you know what i'm saying they could keep they could do it right before a fight and still be you know yeah some things out there like that they they will uh you know uh they they uh energy or they uh what you call it they breathing is good so you got they got they breathing down see so because when you're making love too that's part of breathing you gotta if you can breathe you can be a good make good love maker if you can uh, if you're a boxer you guarantee that you are most a good love maker because you can control your wind in the same sense in the bedroom as you do in the boxing ring you control your breathing that'll make you go longer and you can focus the wind will help you go longer if you study the wind and be able to uh utilize the wind when you make it love i know we get going all over the place right here hey but when you make it love if you can absorb the wind and control the, your wind you can be you ain't got to have no big shit you can you can be a great love maker if you control the wind if you can breathe know how to breathe that's another part though, but uh 15 can might go up in on it, but uh yeah, so what I'm saying is God is whoever you uh you then whoever need when you when you become someone that somebody need, you become almost like their God because they're dependent on you. When somebody dependent on you, you become their God. 
So these beings wanted us to, the, the beings that want worship want you dependent on them, whether it be for information, whether it be, you, you think you need some from them, and they ain't gonna wanna. They ain't gonna wanna teach you every, how to really do it. They ain't gonna wanna teach you something. How you? This how you know somebody playing games and they trying to guard you, right? When somebody got information and they won't teach it to you freely, and they or they just dangle it on the screen piece by piece. Oh, you gotta get this. Oh, you almost had it. Oh, give me twenty five more dollars. They really like a fucking gypsy or uh, magician at a, at a circus or uh, at a damn fair or something. One of them cats that pull up when the fair pull up and he hustle niggas out of ten thousand dollars real quick and he disappear. That's what that's what the guard, that's what these niggas is doing now. They 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 pop up, they gypsies, they pull out a box, their box is the Bible or the Quran or whatever box they might have. Uh, oh, one of them boxes. Whatever books, <laughs> books, yeah, right? box, box, books, same thing. Whatever <laughs> box they will put you in yeah. is the box they'll go in to get yeah. their tricks. Their mm -hmm. tools and their gadgets to use on you. That's right. So they open their book because they got to open the box and pull some magical out of it mm -hmm. while you wait with bated breath like a child for the presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they bring that presence to you, not because you knew you needed they because they made you believe you needed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we become dependent upon it, we get locked in and we lose focus. Mm -hmm. Or what living's about because they scared us into a direction. How do they scare us? Well, there's laws in nature that deal with fear. The animals understand this because there's carnivores that govern omnivores and omnivores that govern the herbivores. And the carnivores is at the top of the food chain. So they'll mm -hmm. cause you to run a certain way so they can run you into the other side of their pack and flank you on the other side. It's military that was learned from carnivores. Damn. So they have to they have to do this in order to ensnare you and trap you so that you could be used as a source of energy because without a carnivore being able to trap his prey, he don't live. He needs to trap his prey. So he's the smartest and the most cunning and the most deceptive. The beings that take advantage of lesser intelligent beings are carnivorous. That's right. They're carnivorous. They demand respect. They will bite your head off. They call it chewing you out. That's what they call it. You got mm -hmm. chewed out. Mm -hmm. Like what? Yeah. They use metaphors like he ate you alive because he's carnivorous. In his right. actions and in his behaviors, that's what he's producing. And he'll definitely present that or we can use the word demonstrate whatever floats your boat. But he'll, he'll present that in order to gain control over your mind. He'll act carnivorous over a herbivore state of mind. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody to eat a lot of vegetables, you're humble. You're more on the lighter side of thinking. You see, because you already know vegetables grow in abundance. Vegetables are God over human life. Mm -hmm. Not meat. It's vegetables. Because without the vegetables, we don't breathe oxygen. Mm -hmm. See, they help us before we eat them. They're literally... The willing sacrifices for human existence, vegetation is. You know? That's right. That's and most right. other herbivore animals, people that are vegetate or vegetable eating people or herbivores, they relax. They're on high alert for carnivores now because that allowed for the herbivores to get smarter. Herbivores weren't, weren't that intelligent starting out because they didn't have a reason to be. Their intelligence was in what herbs to eat, what not to eat. They knew what foods and fruits and veggies were good to eat. The herbivores learned this before anything else. So the herbivores had to be first before the carnivores existed. There was a, a falling in degree of, uh, of potential energies. And everything here is eating and consuming a life force in order to gain more intelligence and to sustain its energy. So consumption of energy is not a bad thing and it never will be. Otherwise, you can call the demons and the devils everything that eats meat. Because meat is flesh. Flesh is skin, muscle tissue, fat, ligaments, bones. You see, we just don't look at it as flesh because we tricked ourselves mentally to follow that, the status quo. Eat what we give you. The same way the witch fattens up the kids in the fairy tales before she eats them. The children have to be smart enough to make the witch's plan backfire on her. 
the herbivores now got the guns. They're intelligent enough to reverse it on the media. But after we do that, if we dominate the negatives, how are we going to balance out the energy in another way? Because the energy in itself will always be here. You can't displace it. If you do, it grows a cyst in the body. It grows a tumor. It grows a cancer. It accumulates like a mound on the planet. And there's always something in that mound. So you got to think about it. Everything in nature has a governing force. These pastors are called pastors, pastures, pastors, same word, pasture, pastor. Spell the word pasture, P-A-S-T-U-R-E. And then pastor, uh, P-A-S-T-O-R. They just dropped the E, right? And tricked you. Whoever is in charge of the pasture is the pastor because he would be the shepherd of the land and the shepherd over the flock. And what do pastors do in order to get their sheep? What do shepherds do in order to get their sheep to move a certain direction? They got to put fear in them to move them. What do they do with that fear? How they put fear or how we used to put fear in them? Before was the rod. We used to carry a staff, a long staff. We could hook the necks of the ones that got outside the um the single cell movement we caused with the herd of sheep. And we can whip the ones and hit them, you know, to get them in line as well. So it had to be fear that the shepherd used to keep his flock under control. Why would a right, pastor right. do anything different? Why would a, a religious leader do anything different? He looks at all of you under his spell as sheep. Mm -hmm. So he's going to put fear in you. If he doesn't, you'll leave his congregation and do what you want to do. And then you can't be in his congregation and do what you want to do because he's going to check you on it because he's the shepherd. He's the ram. So the imagery is in nature of why the leadership is the way it is in the human form as well as the leadership is also in the galaxy. We don't have to have anybody telling us what to do if we're adults. But you got to be thinking, functioning adults. You can't be an adult that thinks like a child still, because then you're going to need a pastor. You're going to need an imam, a sheikh. You're going to need a, 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 a Taoist master, a Buddhist monk. You're going to need these people because they're going to restore balance and order and discipline in you with their ways of doing it, you know, with their words vibration they show you different uh ritual techniques to get your mind back focused and then you got religious leaders that take full advantage of you they're the carnivores you got to look at the natures of man when you deal with the natures you got to consider what's out there in nature first you can't just assume the man is a man of the cloth and he's all good he's got good any it depends on his circumstances you want to know what a pastor's angle is? Go to his house and see how he lives. Right. If he's living way better than everybody in the congregation, but people in the congregation ain't living that good, he's a carnivore. If he's living basic, people in the congregation eating good and they all coming up together, he's an omnivore. If he's a pastor that ain't got nothing and y'all church is a hole in the wall shack and he's starting from scratch and y'all ain't never get out of there, he's a herbivore. He's just giving and giving and giving. He don't expect nothing from y'all but discipline. That's it. These are the natures. The natures have an order to them and they have a rule and a governing force to them. So we have to pay attention to the governing force because it would trinkle outward from the microcosm and trinkle inward from the macro. We pay attention to it, we can't go wrong. Then won't, it won't be no need for a bunch of shepherds or pastors or sheikhs or imams or ministers, or doctors, because we would all be all of the above ourselves. Now, what's the odds of that? The odds of that are very slim in this age and time, because we have to program the children to want to be, we have to program our offspring, our future versions of ourselves to do it. If we don't, then if we didn't do it, then we still won't do it in our child's form. 
does that still a, a cast off of energy of the very first male humanoid or the male humanoids on the planet? We're still the energy of those males. The females are still the energy of the earliest females on the planet. Why do, why do we need to be led by any religious forces? What I say, I say, let science lead you, right? And everything that's unknown will be known because science is going to lead you right into knowing what nature's all about. Science or scion or means to know from the ancient Greek. And then in today's time, it's like the, the you know, the study of life, the study of nature. <clears throat> so how can you neglect it? And then how can you look at philosophy as wrong and then try to say somebody else's idea of life is a philosophy, but you reading out of the Bible and yours ain't a philosophy? That right. don't make no damn right. sense. Right. Yeah, they contradict themselves because they don't really understand. They're just passionate about what it is they're living for. And a man will throw his, his life on the line for what he believes in, too, just like he will for a mother and a child. That's right. He'll do it. That's his spiritual aspects of a man, the willing sacrifice of a man. And because men had that in them, we naturally are gravitating towards militaries, towards being soldiers and things, because we had the sacrificial spark in us. We always will. A woman to throw herself in the line of fire for a baby faster than she will throw herself in the line of fire for you. Now, she'll do it, but she doesn't really want to. She's hoping this shit don't hit the fan. And then you got some women that want to see which man is going to be the greater of the outcome. <laughs> Those are carnivorous women. I like to see a fight. You know, our carnivorous women be the best boxers and best. They do everything better like men. They do everything aggressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't mind it either. And ain't nothing wrong with it. Like I said, every energy here is not this place. We the ones that put it out of order once we're down here. But it was in order from jump because we were all living in our proper perspectives, our proper areas, habitats, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm, let me. This is this right here is something that I think everybody should know. That if they don't know it, I'm gonna mention it because I want them to think about it. In on the planet, every zone on the planet has a different type of temperature. Therefore, it's enough or a different type of energy level on uh, that continent or that country or that spot. In that spot, there are reptiles, there are mammals, there are insects, and there are water animals, right? Water insects, there's vegetation, there's uh, air and uh, different uh, uh, colors of, uh, of everything depending on the energy on the planet and where the country is. If you go over there to Africa, there's an extreme amount of animal life. It grows very large. The only other place on the planet that has larger animals is in the water. So in Africa, it's only safe to say, of course, we would be extremely large and have extremely intelligent brains and things there. Because we don't have much of a death season there. It stays hot, stays warm, stays moist in certain areas. It stays life-giving. So life is allowed to sustain itself there, therefore outgrowing and becoming gigantic. You got other portions of the planet where the people don't grow that big because they're not allowed to. It's the, the energy in that zone. When they move and migrate and pick up other DNA, then you'll find that you'll have more giants of those species that are considered uh, uh, cooler in degrees type of energies. And they might procreate faster too because they're so small. See, when you look at our Asian brothers and sisters, they procreate really fast, but they're also normally short people. When you look at black people, there's a large gap and height between <laughs> a lot of us. So you're going to see a large number of tall, brown color, copper color people, and a large amount of very small 
pygmy lineage type of, of bloodlines. So it's evident that we have Bushmen that were tiny, and then we had a type of uh, a brown skin, copper skin uh, color human that was a large uh, human that came from a certain time period or that grew in a certain time period. And then due to dehydration over time, the DNA got dehydrated along with the planet. And there's, there's different life cycles. So they might have dug up some gigantic bones in the soil. There's people that go, oh man, it was giants from now. I'm like, man, it was early humans from a time period where the humanoid form needed to be this big. Plus it was enough moisture and density in the atmosphere. The air wasn't as thin as it is now. It was thicker. It was more moisture in it. Can you imagine how robust we can grow with that right. kind of moisture right. in the atmosphere and the vegetation and the animals and the insects and everything else and it being warm for and suitable for new life to keep mixing and creating? Man, we had some monstrosities back then, too. You should be looking going, dang, is that really an eight foot tall? And we didn't have no words for this, but, you know, we were scared of it. It'd be a large goddamn spider the size of a semi truck. You wander off in the wrong zone back at that time, but you was also giant too, which is why they show you the advantage or the example of that in the movie Avatar with the Navi being 10 feet tall beings with three That's right. fingers, That's right. not four. Three fingers and a tail. And they have to bond with the animal life and nature because they can touch anything with that tail and it's like a nervous system straight into the brain same way in the matrix, they plugged into the nervous system by plugging it straight into the brain. So our connection to it is in our vibration of thinking and our wavelength of thinking, because every thought deals with an electrical vibration, a wavelength that you produce and emit as a body, as a vessel, you know, starship, as if you will, uh, overgrown atom, if you will. So, I mean, I hope I didn't get too long winded on the religion. No, no, hey, no, no, hey, you went in, bro. You going in. Like, you, you, like, you, you're with a lot of aspects. Uh, another thing, too, uh, to talk about is. Hold on, hold on, big bro. I'm sorry. Mark Cooper, tell big brother Mark Cooper, I said thank you, man, for the oh, donation. Oh, yeah, shout out Mark Cooper, man. That's my brother right Appreciate there. Appreciate that, hey, big bro. I love Mark Cooper. That's my guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Shout out Mark Cooper, man. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, the, the 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 thing we dealing with is we dealing with with this it, we we giving our power over people don't realize they giving their power over to uh the energy that you're talking about they don't, they don't realize they're giving that over to people when they worship them Muhammad how do we uh we know that this dude exists uh, uh they talk about Jesus dying for us we already broke that down though or what they really mean but we give our energy over to the wrong shit and then we wonder why we broke and we poor and we sad. Why are we sad? Why are we so sad? Now, uh, some people do need a God. See, I gotta see, because some people are gods here and some people are, you know, humans, regular humans. So some people are gonna need a God. No sweat. No sweat. If you need a God, no sweat. See, but like 15 say, what's a God to a God? You know what I'm saying? What's a God to a God? What's a king to a king? You know what I'm saying? So we, we got that going on too. We got beings that's gods going around and coming in contact with other gods. Some gods might be good gods and they might teach you what they know. That That is the parents that you have that pass down the information, their knowledge. The parents that don't pass down that, inf that, that's the gods. Your parents are the gods, your gods, really. They're supposed to be your gods, and they're supposed to pass down the God. Another form of being a god is knowledge. Knowledge gives you power, right? So the, your parents, if they uh, uh, only got their head on straight, they went, they supposed to give you a head start. You supposed, the, 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 the god that come out to the next god always supposed to be better than the next god. Because that the, the, the God before you, you're supposed to study that God 
and see the good things that that God did, but then really that God is supposed to pass the good things down to you if they're a good God. I'm talking as, as your father because they call God the father, right? So your father is your God as when you're a child. Your mother is your God. Your grandma is your God. Your, the elders around you, if they're good beings, they uh, we've got some bad elders and good elders, but good gods and bad gods. They, they are your God because they got more, uh, sometimes, and this ain't in all cases, but mo most times they usually have more knowledge because they have the experience because they live longer. And if the, the good wisdom that they have as a God, as your father, God the father, right? God the mother. Because if Jesus was God, then who was Mary, right? We can get into all that shit, but we talking about the mother and the father as being your God as a kid. They supposed to pass the God knowledge. They supposed to pass the create their creativity, whatever they got down to you, whether it be through genetics and through mental training as you coming up as a youth. You know what I'm saying? So my dad was a god to me. My dad passed taught me how to turn water into wine. I know how to turn water into wine. My daddy showed me how to fix brakes on the car. My dad showed me how to chop wood. My dad showed me how to plant shit. My dad showed me how to hustle, how to kick cans and hustle. How to, how to hunt and gather. Hunt and gather. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that's God. That's what God, that's, that's a good God. A good God yeah. will teach you that. But a bad God won't teach you that. They always make you come to them to for they can do it for you so they can charge you. Right. Can mm -hmm. I add in? Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you want to. Okay, imagine uh, back in ancient Egypt, right? Because, you know, we do like to go back. Um, I like to go forward, but let's go back real quick. There's a goddess named Neat or Neat or Net or Knit. Uh -huh, okay? Uh -huh. The vowels are interchangeable. Remember that in your psyche when you're dealing with spells, which are words. Uh -huh. Okay? Neat is Net. When we were hunting and gathering back in the days, especially when it comes to fishing, the man had not uh, created something interwoven yet. That came out of the creative consciousness of the female. She creates a net mm -hmm. and we learn how to use the net that she created to hunt. That's right. So Neith became known as a warrior or hunter type goddess that dealt with you know hunting the net and and the the the, the arrow the bow and arrow kind of like the Sagittarius uses the bow and arrow on one of her symbols where she's cocking a bow and arrow which lets you know her craftsmanship dealt with hunting hunting that's right and providing she probably helped create the bows and the arrows not only was she had been proficient in using one because it's her craft that's right and it helped the men because the men, we used to go out before we did that. We just had spears. The woman took the spear and minimized it and made it small. Yeah. Like yeah. a small baby, which is a small man. So she and her artistic value can create anything that we create on a large scale for her. She can create the foundation for it, especially with her hands and need creating the net. That allowed us to ensnare animals in nets, rabbits in nets, and different things that we fish. eat in nets. Mm -hmm. Fish, definitely fish. Mm -hmm. And but so she back, shared her craft. She shared her craft with the with mm -hmm. the people. And so she was a good god. Mm -hmm. All of the gods were considered gods because they used their craft to benefit the families. Yeah. Exactly. The families was the bloodline. The bloodlines exactly. always pay homage to the most intelligent in the family, just like right now in your family. If you had a celebrity in your family, everybody in your family would be talking about it. Yeah. And they go, such and such got locked up and in jail. Call our famous cousin and see if we can help out. <laughs> That's what grandma going to say. Yeah. The word going to come down from grandma to get in touch with cousin Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey don't want to talk to nobody else. Can't none of y'all get him on the phone, but his grandma. Yeah. She is got the power. And if his granddaddy's alive, granddaddy can get him on the phone too. Because Steve Harvey understands where his start is, so he's not going to disrespect his parent, his parental guidance. And he'll get on the phone and he'll do what he can. I'm sure he ain't going to bend over and break. Yeah. yeah. He will let mama know, yes, ma'am, I'll do what I can. You know, I'm going to look into it. And that's her calling upon one of her what? 
messiahs from her bloodline. Come mm -hmm. to the rescue for us. We need you. Mm -hmm. And when a man says, no, I ain't doing shit for them niggas. Excuse my language. I ain't doing nothing for them. That, that you know, they ain't never like me when I was a kid growing up. I had bad trauma in childhood. I ain't doing nothing for them. Well, energy, right, will mm -hmm. pick up on that later as a wavelength you put out a shockwave. So that energy ripples in your DNA. Now your children grow up to not take care of you, not do nothing for you. They're spoiled. They leave you in the dust. Mm -hmm. They complain. They spend all your money. They help you go broke and everything. But you got it coming to you because of what, what you did to grandma and granddad. Mm -hmm. So they tell you, honor thy mother and thy father is part of the code of ethics in nature. Honor those that came before you because they those that came before you are future representations of yourself you're a past representation of them and the babies you have are the even further past representation of the bloodline and you get to see all of those simultaneously that's right so you get to see your baby that you produce you and then your dad that's three generations of one being if granddad's there that's four generations of one being if great granddad's there that's five generations of one being you go all the way back to great granddad. It's a different type of intelligence from a time in the past that you need to collect so that you have knowledge of your past through him. And it's vice versa with the women. Mm -hmm. We need each other for that, for memory, to know what not to do going forward so we don't repeat the past. As our future selves, we can't still be making the same mistakes we made, but we are. That's right. You know, we're being stagnated. It's because, that's hey, why I say the pastor is the word past. The past is right in his name. That's right. A pastor will keep you stuck in the past. <laughs> that's right. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And right uh, there. God, right, is a letter O in the middle of it. O's a vowel. Mm -hmm. Take it out, you just got G and D. Now take out the vowels in the word guide. And you just got G and D. Take out the word, the vowels in the word good. And you just got G and D. God, good, guide. Mm -hmm. Same word. Equivalent. Mm -hmm. See, God is good all the time. Right? That's what mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. How? Because the word God literally is the word good all the time. Yeah. Not some of the time. We just pronounce it. Ah. And not, ooh. Yeah. That's all. People got to understand vowels. There's the spells in the wordplay. So they make us worship good and guidance. Guidance is what a God usually gives, which is why they named us mentors and the men that guide, <laughs> excuse me, men and, and youth, period, children, period. Yeah. They want to guide them up in a good way. They're the godly men. That's right. And women and women now. They're That's the godly right. men and the godly women. Now, they'll say it's because of Jesus, because they don't know no better, but the goodness is in them innately. Mm -hmm. They will be good naturally because in nature, they don't, they're not worried about things. Why? Because they have a herbivore conscience. That's why. That's why, yeah. Carnivores always think about their next lick. Who we gonna hit next? Nigga, why don't you just get a job? <laughs> uh, and I'd rather just take it from somebody. But you need that carnivorous cousin when the carnivorous family member of another empire infiltrates your establishment as a family. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need them because they're gonna match that energy. <laughs> Yeah, y'all gonna have to get on up out of there. The herbivores usually scatter. But your carnivore cousin's gonna stay and duke it out and shoot it out. Yeah. And the omnivores will do the same thing because they got a stroke of meanness in them from the carnivorous mix. They're both. They got the best of both worlds. Yeah. Your omnivores yeah. are like Blade, your daywalker. 
I got all their strengths, none of their weakness except for the thirst. And then you can maintain the thirst with, with vegetables as an omnivore. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine how many human beings on the planet have omnivore blood type because they have what you call A, B blood. That's right. That's right. And they're, and they're designed to eat a little meat, eat, contain, and sustain on vegetables and get plenty of exercise. Then you got people that just have an A blood, an A negative, and an A negative. I mean, an A negative and a B negative, I'm sorry, and an A, B negative. They lean more towards the meat. It's carnivorous in the degrees factor. We got to pay attention to the symbols of negative and positive on everything. If we don't, we're missing out the play of energy right before our eyes, how energy works in the material realm, how we socialize using energy, how we listen to music, as an energy because there's a positive negative wavelength that goes into the brain that allows you to have a positive and negative thought to develop an idea to develop a perspective i wouldn't be able to think of all these perspectives and combine them all like puzzle pieces that i put together completely so i could see the whole picture mm -hmm. i wouldn't be able to do any of that if my brain couldn't remember and process all that i learned and I can't uh, process it in the second. I have to think about it and recall it. Recall where I've seen that before, where I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get a, 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 a old shady and say, total recall. <laughs> it throw you in the zone of the movies and stare you like sheep and trap you and corral you around his umbrella. And then he'll let the wolves eat you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll eat them. Take care yeah, of them. Take I got them together. Off. Now y'all can come eat. Just don't eat me. Like, <laughs> man, man, some some of our shepherds will sell us out. I'm telling you. <laughs> don't you worry about it. I'm God. And you be like, God, how come you keep losing your cell phone? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there, my let me, let me chill. Hey, hey, I'm telling part of the mind control go ahead big bro go ahead. i'm gonna tell you because like i said like god is with the see the word why do god need the word need is right there see need is a powerful word it's a it's a word of power you know what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. uh it's a position it's a uh it's one of the, the words man it's might hit you with the i need you know what i'm saying that's that's a, a word of power man you know that's part of god's power to have that that he needs he need worship. That's part of his power. Need is the key part of his component in his power. And yeah, <laughs> that I'm telling is. you. They need you to need them. Yeah. They need you. If they don't need you to need them, then why do they scare you so much? Exactly. They know, they know when Kanye West said, what's a God to a non-believer? That's right. A dude that don't believe in you as a God? Yeah, nothing. He's gonna turn around and go his own way because he's his own god and she's her own goddess yeah, in her right. own right. The nature does not lie, man. Nature will not lie. It's 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 right there in front of our faces of how we're supposed mm -hmm. to be, how mm -hmm. our energy is supposed to be conducted. That's why I like to give examples of never to steer wrong again. If you use the method of positive, neutral negative that's uh herbivore that's omnivore and then that's carnivore those are the three levels your solid liquids and your gases working and manifesting themselves in so many different variations and forms right before our face but we ignore the fact that there's solid liquid gas elements to everything that exists here in the material realm and there's five platonic solids to everything that's mineral here. Five. Like I mentioned earlier, five-point stargate, the woman's womb, every pastor, every pimp, every president, every government, every uh, uh, um, uh, force, military force, um, every scientific program, everything has to start out with either protecting the woman or containing the woman's force. Mm-hmm. And pastors can't make it without women. Trust me. Go ahead. That, that video I showed y'all, the brother's wife telling him he had to pay his tithes. Yeah. 
That's right. That was two men going at it. And she was right there in the middle of it because she believed what the other man, which is other than her Messiah in her home, her husband, she believed him. So it's blatant disrespect to her husband to go outside of the home for help from men or from <laughs> other men to tell Good. the man in the household what to do is disrespectful to man. him as a messiah is it yes i'm telling you yes that's that's that's, that's, that's not supposed to happen a man if a, if a man has a problem with another man he does not use his woman to get to him he goes to him man to man mano and mano god to god that's right let's talk about it we ought to be able to talk about it like reasonable higher level gods Versus put our hands on each other like animals, like beasts. But we can go there. Yeah. Men, men, we check each other on that, which is why when we talk about it, we know where it could go, the potentials. So we come to each other up front with respect. Hey, man, you know, I, I just was wondering, I don't mean no disrespect by this, you know. We come in easy. And then if that dude is a carnivore, he, ah, oh, nigga, well, I do this and that. Don't be coming up to my door try to talk to me about. He's like, oh. <laughs> my bad brother but see he might not be a herbivore he might be an omnivore which means is he gonna hit you around the back end of your house he gonna come through the back door on you. right <laughs> he's not gonna leave no he's gonna sneak around on you and hit you upside your head to where he has the advantage because omnivores are sharp and they carry more energy carnivores carry a burst of energy because they eat meat which That's means right. their strength is gonna wear down fast they strong, but if you survive that strength past 45 seconds in a street fight, you got a chance. Right. That's indeed. So that's an omnivore, carnivore, herbivore mentality in human form. And we do go there. We won't, we won't need a pastor, bro, if you start exercising. Okay, when somebody tell me something, you go, where have I seen that in nature? Where is it at where I can go to see it? If it's something that you just have to close your eyes and see, well, then you're being guided and led by the person that gave you the vision. But if I could go out in nature and look at what you're talking about from nature's vision, then I can create my own artistic value. Because art right. Im imitates life. Creation is art. Creation comes from the imagination. Without the imagination, there's nobody producing or creating anything. None. Not even no religions. Which is a form of discipline for what? A bloodline, a family. Remember what I said on one of the classes? I said granddad created religion because right. he needed after he passed away. It was a rule book and a guideline and an instructional book as a guide, as the main God of the family to give to all the other offspring of men and never forget the order of the family. That's right. The order of the family. Stay together. Don't forget the matriarch and patriarch order. They work together hand in hand. One can't exist without the other. And the man is not greater than the woman. They both have a platform here that they both run. Now, if a man wants to stay at home and do it, well, they designed it that way here. They made it so where we as men have to stay at home now. They made it that way. So you can see America is a feminine energy ran base place. And as I said before, there's nothing wrong with that, but everybody that knows that is going to get in on it, meaning the pastors, the government, and all the other forces, the jobs, the colleges, they're going to siphon off of her desires. They feed on the woman's intelligence through her desires, through her material desires, what she thinks she needs. Because the man got to go get it. And if you don't go hunt and gather it, what she needs, she'll be what? Upset. Dissatisfied. I wanted to show y'all earlier today with the word uterus, once you transform it, what it shows. Mm -hmm. Can I see the screen real quick? I just want to see the whiteboard and I'm going to draw it out for him. All right. You can do that. Let me find out. All right. Boom. Go ahead. You should be able to do it All now. Right. Thank you. All right. This whiteboard. All right. 
Here we go. Hathor. Let me get this. I'm sorry. I need the pencil. I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, I see your screen. Go ahead. Okay. This is black. Okay. Uterus is U T. You see the cow's head with the horns above it? Mm -hmm. The Holy Grail cup is right there in the U and the T, right? Yeah. Now, when you spell it out, it's U T E R U S. But if you reverse and flip these two, the U and the T, you get Taurus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm put on me spell it right here. Nah, you cold. Hey, you cold. I see where you're going. You cold. Yeah. Which means Taurus the bull. Yeah. The cow. Right? And is the cow or the bull not a stubborn force? Yeah, that's right. So I'm saying by law of nature, we knew a long time ago that we were dealing with a stubborn force. Period. But they're stubborn because they're made to be that way, not because they're crazy. See, the material realm is stubborn. I can go here with it. When you want to melt a metal or bend a metal or pound a metal with a hammer, it's a mineral, correct? Yep. It's stubborn. You can't just shape and mold it. It's a mineral that's stubborn. So the mineral realm is stubborn in itself by law of nature because everything here has to be controlled through blood, sweat, and tears. Right. <laughs> everything. You got to work hard, till the ground and soil to bring up some crops. That's stubbornness. Right there. You got to sweat. You see? By the sweat of your so, brow. Right. So, that, you know... <laughs> It's like right every all all the examples of it are right in our face of um I'm trying to exit out this hold on a second here. Hey, I wanted to ask you too, uh, while you was on that same topic with the Hawthorne. Now, does that play a part uh being that we in a different zodiac? Because you know we went over to the zodiac and we was in that, I think it was during the time of Mo well, you no, know, of course of the Bible, right? But the time of Moses. Uh, they was in the age of uh, the Taurus, and they was worshiping the bull. Does that does that energy still goes into this phase, or is it? A, are we on a whole other energy? Are we still on this bull energy? The uh, the uh, that type of energy. Uh -huh. Okay. No, no, no. The bull energy is still here, though. Okay, See, okay. Piscean energy, bull energy, like the lioness energy, Leo. All these energies of the zoo types that we're talking about, they're not leaving the planet. They're, once they came in, they were circulating with the other okay. energies here. Yeah, I feel they it. create more intelligence. They don't leave. I feel you it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, as they come in, though, in the new cycles, they'll push out. And I'm not saying they don't. Forgive me for saying they don't leave. They do leave, but they seep out slow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as they're being replaced here, there will be other energies come in. I remember... These same energies are all over. So they're galactic energies that come into this plane of existence to also be used. These same energies are everywhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what makes up the, the planet in itself as a, a living organism. These energies were collected and created first as a mass uh, foundation or plantation or plant or planet for us to live on and build upon and grow upon and expand upon here mm -hmm. so that it, all of it is galactic even dirt up under our feet it's galactic right. yeah you know this gas slowed down to its slowest form the cold lower because i noticed uh as we come in with the uh on the hydrogen that's when like they said the the, the heat is higher the heat content is higher but as you cool off and temperature on this side of the mirror we the the, the the gas gets slower and slower and slower in vibration till you get up all the way to gold. Gold is really a gas that's been slowed down so slow the vibration to make it into a solid. It's really you can speed gold up into sound. You can actually pull gold out of the air. One, hey, if it'll be a new uh, and I'm I'm hoping that we're gonna put this together, fit me and you 
on a machine that can pull gold out the air because you can because it just imagine if you can gold is developed from the sun over a million, over a certain period of time. Now, if that's if that stands the reason, then that means that if you can speed the uh, pull the energy from the sun and speed the process up, then you can create gold free out the thin air from from, from uh, photon particles. You know what I'm saying? Straight out the thin air. So so I know that uh, on this side of the mirror, all it is is gases. The nine the the gases hurling in, being slowed down to the lower temperatures. And that generates the the, the the colder you go, the more freak the lower frequency it is, and the more solid it becomes. So they say, oh, you get into the hard metals as you go up the uh, element chart. You get into like Omnicron, element one fifteen. That's a heavy, heavy, high level, heavy. Uh, and then they got unstable uh, elements and all that, right? So what what I'm saying is. Is if we're gonna be able to do that one day, uh get gold spray out to out to off the sun, just pull the sun, solar energy into some kind of device, and then it turns into gold once we mix it with other maybe a couple more chemicals. I'm telling you, because gold you is you go ahead. What makes gold valuable? Uh, that's a good question. I got a lot of ideas. Um, what makes gold valuable is that it doesn't rust. Uh, that's one thing that I know about it. Uh, it can be thinned it out real thin. Uh, and it's it's, a, it's not the best conductor of electricity. I think silver is the best conductor. Uh, I want to say what they say. Uh, but for my guess, I would have to say because the gods, the 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 the, the, the mentality of the gods of the Bible saying the gold was good and and it trickled down, nigga. We got this gold and. Nigga, nigga got some gold. It, it's, just, it's just really, it's all mental. What gives gold its value? The, the, what the people, the people give gold. The, everything that's here that's material is given value by the people. About what, how they think of it. Like money. Money is really some damn paper. You can, it's the same thing as you going to wipe your ass and taking a shit. It's the same paper from the same tree. But the people in their mind, they made money they God because they need money. People need money. So they, if you need it, that becomes your God, right? So the uh, the value of, of the goal is being placed uh, from the mental perspective of the people, of what they, the value, like if, niggas, if a group of niggas get together and say, oh yeah, nigga, this gold is the shit. This, we're going to charge $25. That's the price uh, ounce for the gold. And so that becomes the mental uh, social construct of how they operate with the gold. But like I say, I think it's only got value because what people think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to add to it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. By saying simply, it's a malleable material. And as an early craftsman, we loved soft, malleable metals because we had the most uses and got the most uses out of them. And that's from a craftsman's perspective. Okay, I got you. And if you, if we want to go all the way back to the golden calf example of the woman, once again, women love gold. On top of women loving gold, in order for us to create a furnace or fire uh, area for industry back then at the time, during the time of Taurus, the bull, and the not worship of the calf or cow, but the intelligence of the cow and calf, the breeding of the cow and calf, and the first uses of working the cows and calves, bulls helped us spin things to help bring heat to other mechanisms you know we used them we used to whip them make them go round and round in sumeria the bull was a very big thing because industry was in sumeria building herb chaldea they had a lot of things being smelted metals being melted down and craftsmanship went to another level during that time period of the Taurus. see so they was able to make a golden calf you can't do that without the fire getting hot enough you got to melt that metal so the uses of it 
And then the mixtures of it with other alloys to make it stronger, not just the electrical uh, value, because that's important, just like the silver. It's important for people to know that silver conducts more than, than gold. It's important for people to know about copper. It's important for them to know how platinum is used. The reason what makes these things valuable is not us wearing them. It's what the, we can get out of them technology-wise because they'll show you right there in a movie, right? Not to get too far off a of goal, but with the mineral wealth, they'll show you that they need certain minerals in order to create certain high technologically advanced things because they're able to tap into the power of the stone. That's what lightsaber crystals is all about, the crystals. There's, you know, this is a movie uh, aspect, but they're letting you know you can tap into these energies, meaning you can focus things through these other things to make uh, uh, or cause a reaction. Quartz crystals, uh, those are rocks. All crystals are rocks. Diamond is a rock. When we look at metals, gold is a metal. If we mix the diamond and the gold and use it technologically and not just use it as a jewelry piece, a diamond gold ring or a diamond gold necklace, and we use and tap into the electrical, uh, uh, the, the, the particle conduction of it, because you know it's got charged particles within it as a metal, as a conductive metal, you just got to be able to get the particles to flow. That's what I was, you know, teaching in the electrical class, how to make electricity work is a circuit. You got to be able to create a circuit. What's a gold ring? It's a complete circuit. When we wear a gold ring on our finger and then the diamonds on top of it, the diamonds represent also energy. You can tap into a diamond to create a laser or some type of focus. You know, they x-rays and everything's like, it's mad things that got diamonds in them. It's mad things that got crystals in them. The cell phones we're talking on right now got quartz crystals in them. Just a little slither because quartz crystals help us produce sound and transmit sound through speakers. Most people don't know that. They use coarse crystals to bug and tap your house, the CIA. Bug your shoe, bug your, your door, bug anything that uh, sparks some pressure. Pe pe piezo electricity, uh, electricity, piezo electricity, right, will spark the electricity in it and turn the device on using the crystal, the technology of the crystal. So gold and silver also has some charge in it that can be tapped into, platinum charge we're not thinking about actual energy production and conduction we think about looking good we think about looking good is, right? you know what i'm saying if i could take and get a team of a, a daggone nubian black scientists we can start up a whole group of things hospitals uh, uh schools uh different products and things because we'll have a research and development plan where we can build that stuff together and i had that dream you know with some other you know brothers but according to me i'm not gonna sit and wait 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 until i'm crushed by the weight and that's what was happening with me i was getting crushed wait Wait to get wait. Wait, I'm like, all right, all right, I can't. I'm sorry. Love you, brothers, but I can't take this serious no more. I know when somebody got me waiting in the closet. You just wait on in the closet. I'll be on right back to get you on out. And I'm sitting in there thinking, oh, or, or I go hide in the closet waiting for the criminals to leave. And they ain't leaving no time soon. They done moved in. So I'm just sitting here waiting in suspense. That's what religion does. It causes you to expect things to come. As long as you expect things, you're waiting. And as long as you're waiting, you're carrying the burden of the weight. You want a burden off your shoulders in life? Let go of religion. Don't let go of discipline. Let go of religion. Let go of the, the gate on your mind, on your brain. Let go of it. So you can really start seeing the true value of existence. And how nature in itself is wild and wild is what life is. But to put it in order, the fathers are here. The sun keeps the planets in order. So the fathers here, down here on the planet, the sons of man, 
sons of the son, the sons of Mary, the mother. <laughs> That's what they do. Keep things in order. And some of us are completely out of order. That's why I talked about the other son, because the other son is not within the order of the son that's present. It's in the order of the galaxy, but not the order of that son. So it moves around in an elliptical, in an elliptical fashion, circles back around and comes back around and moves out again. That's the daddy. That's the Papa was a Rolling Stone daddy in the galaxy from a galaxy sense when we're connecting our life forms to the celestial bodies that govern us, that's it. This is the example that is rippled inward into the planets. The example of how to move is, in, it comes in as energy. So we don't have no other way but to behave the way the energies are present or presented. And it confuses us if somebody is leading us to a direction of servitude, waiting on servitude, waiting on judgment. The only person that judges me was my mama and my daddy. That's what you tell people now. You ain't my daddy. When they try to get you in line, you ain't my mama. You can't tell me what to do because you know who your God is. Down here on earth, your God is your mother and your parents, your grandparents, right. your great grandparents. Those are your guides and they are good to you. They're good to you. They do some negative too, but they got to keep you in order. If they don't keep you in order, the galaxy rep representation of the galaxy is your home. Your children will destroy your home if you let them. And they don't mean no harm. They're just being wild. Just like any other bush or tree that grows without the proper grooming. It don't look aesthetically pleasing or artistically pleasing, you see, or geometrically pleasing without grooming. So somebody has to cut you, right? Your shape is void until your mother and father put their hands on you and show you what it's about because they had to learn it too from the guides that were before them. And they learned it from the guides that were before them. And we call them the elders. We call them the ancestors. We call them the older gods. We call them the angels. We call them everything. We got many names for them to remember them. And remember the powers that they gave us in our genes and genetics that flow through the gases. Genes are in the gases too. So if you're saying, you know, we can make gold out of air, I'm saying gold is made from air it has to pass through air first to germinate down here exactly. Earth, you know and the planet is making it real slow so there's got to be a sped up version of it there's got to be and i think the alchemy that we present when we make monatomic gold is a version of the speeding it up that's right that's right you can also take that monatomic gold and make it into a ceramic state. Um, I'm sorry, a metallic state again from the ceramic state, changing it and altering it, transmutating it. Therefore, the value in it changes too. See, cinnamon has many values, but it looks like bark. If you go out and find cinnamon in the wild, you got to learn how to process it and get all of its value out of it. And every part of the plant can be processed, the leaf, the stem, the root, the fruit, seeds, all of it, depending on what plant you're dealing with. So if the healing uh, for the nations is in the herb life, then the herb life is God life to human life. That's a stage of gods right there for us that we have to follow. We don't have a choice and we cutting them down. Some of us act like we are crazy when we talking to the trees. You remember I said earlier, don't nobody got it. They're providing everything for you and we don't do nothing but piss on them and shit on them. Cut them down, and build our houses, and sit on them, and lay on them with our beds. <laughs> Man, you talk about having it rough. Don't ever complain about your life. Uh, ever. 
ever. I don't care how bad a nigga had it. I don't care. Look at the trees. I'll always be able to top your life. Well, the trees ain't never been molested and raped. Yes, they have. You see that big hole in that tree that that owl is living in? What do you call that? <laughs> or that, you know, them rat, not the raccoons, but the squirrels. The things that live underneath the roots and everything is just siphoning off of the energy of the tree. But the tree just keeps on giving. See? So we got to quit complaining about our quality of existence. We ain't got nothing to complain about. You know how many, many, uh, the millions of things we kill every day just from walking? And we worried about it. We talking about a heaven. I guess germs go to heaven every day. I mean, everything that passes would have to have a heaven if we got one. Indeed. Why we want to be so excluded from everything and separated and singled out? I don't. I'm part of the all. And the all is a part of me. And everything that comes with it. So that includes everything. It gives new meaning to when I see or hear a brother or a sister, whether it be hip hop head or not, and they say, everything is everything, brother. Like you dag or right, and and a pure statement alive. You heard anybody say anything purer than that? <laughs> everything is everything is true backwards and forward. It doesn't matter. You can say it backwards, it's still gonna be everything is everything. I'm talking about in reverse. <clears throat> That's a statement. All in all, all is all. All for one, one for all. Three musketeers. Why three musketeers? Solid, liquid, gas. Because without the bond of solid, liquid, gas, <laughs> you ain't got no all for one. All for one is your body being formed inside the sacred room of the woman. She's gathering it all for one. And then we do what? Come out of the womb and give her problems. Be hard-headed. <laughs> That's why dad is right there. Because dad going to scorch you like the sun. Going to burn your butt up with the rod or with the belt. Or yeah, father with the God. switch. A father God. Father guy, Feather guy. There you go. This, this being is the leader of guiding and discipline. So to take his hands and time behind his back and say that the child protective services protect the children and not the father is to remove God from the home. That's right. You can't find that essence that that man brings to that house in the church. You can't. So religion usurped the man's power in the house, in his own home. He's been reduced to damn near nothing in his home, in the eyes of his children and his wife, meaning his offspring, too. his future version. I'm sorry, go ahead, big bro, I missed it. No, no, my bad, I just said that video you put out proved it. That video you put out with the dude getting his money took by the church. Yeah. She gave his pay stub over to the pastor and the deacons. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, so they knew they knew how much he was making every week and they knew <laughs> that, he, that he wasn't giving a true tip for sin <laughs> so she that's threw a hundred in there tipping. That's I'm tipping. telling you bro that's sad that she depends on the pastor for leadership and not her husband why did you marry him why would you give him offspring that's the greatest gift you can give a man is to give him his children, offspring. They become yours and his, y'all share. There is no singularity in this. Ain't no woman ruling over the man and man ruling over the woman. We play our roles and things play out smoothly. We ain't playing our roles in position and we don't want, we don't like that position because we don't like nature for some reason. 
can. Well, you can hate nature, but hey, you're of it. So you're some type of hatred force in it. If you don't like your body, hey, you're, you're the body type that the bloodline needed for your mom and dad, that is. They needed more women in the bloodline for reproduction purposes, and they needed men in the bloodline for reproduction purposes. So when a daughter is born, it's a great gift to the bloodline. When a male is born, it's another great gift. You got to be thankful for both types. Outside the body, we exist and flow as gases. And then from there to the electrical spark, from there to the soul spark. On our way up out of here as we ride the wave. Everything is moving on waves. That's why the body of a woman is curvy. The planet is curvy and wavy. You can't look at really a smooth, flat surface of land. You can't. You can see a, a smooth rock, but it ain't flat. It's lumpy. It's smooth. It's got its waves to it, though. It's layers. Hmm. And we just got to respect it. A pastor can't lead you into giving your tithes up every Sunday by telling you it's God getting it when he's the God <laughs> receiving it. You know what I mean? He's the God there. The pastor is the God at the church. And the church is the crutch. It's what everyone is leaning on. But she got y'all up in the church because she thinks the church is for safety. And it used to be. It was a time for it. We needed it. Sometimes the church helped us plan and protect us from the clan when we were going to the war with the carnivorous human beings that wanted us dead. Our omnivores had to protect us. And they brought us into houses and developments and establishment to protect us. Plus, you can make plans inside of a church, too. It has as many uses. Now, it's, now I'm not saying that all of the pastors are bad or wrong. I'm saying they got the wrong idea. To me, from my perspective. Now, watch this. That's right. Imagine a pastor that has a church in your local neighborhood that everybody gives tithes to, that everybody gives offerings to every Sunday. And every Sunday, none of that money is leaving the vault. It stays in a vault. The vault don't have to be at the church. It could be at a secret location that the church knows, but that money belongs to the people in the church, not for a bigger church. See, it's a place to make plans and achieve goals as a community. That's right. It's not there for you to siphon off for of the life force and energy of the people in the neighborhood like you the boss. Everybody got to listen to me. I'm the voice of God. No, nigga. You are a tyrant. Soon to meet your end. <laughs> That's right. You will be exposed and when they expose you, all dirt going to come out on you because you never owned your shit in the first place. Never. Now they're telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did this. He did that. He did this. And the dirt comes out. Then they ruin your money. And that's called messing up the church's money. <laughs> so it's yeah. dirty pastors that pimp the church that mess up the money. See? It's not the congregation bringing the money in. There are the people in the community that you need to train mathematically to put that money in the right place to gain. Every pastor, every Sunday, instead of opening the Bible and preaching and giving everybody words and inspiration, he needs to be going. All right. How many people live in the community that are part of this family here? Okay. We're looking for this amount of money because we got a project for the children, all of our children. We're going to buy land and we're going to build them a recreation center. This is the kind of organization that could happen. But what do they do? Now nah, we'll put the recreation center right here in the church so everybody got to come here. They got to bring more kids into the church and more money, nigga. Like, what? Think about the land you, you can buy. Money, yeah. You think about the land, though, you can buy with the money that you get from the congregation for the people in the congregation. Everybody that goes to that church that's been there for 50 to 60 years should have a plot of land of their own that the church bought and paid for by the money of the people that go there. 
Anybody need groceries? Church. Anybody need their bills paid? Church. And that would be the godship of the elder called the minister or called the doc or called the pastor. Now, you know, certain leaders did. They established land, they bought housing right. developments, they housed their people, they took care of their people the best way they knew how. They led them as long as they could. Many leaders did that. So as you, as you think about it, some of us got the right idea, but we lose focus at some point because people weigh on us. Being a savior is not an easy task. That's you never ask if the people wanted you to save them because they come to you to save them. And you got to ask them before you start saving them, what are you running from? That's usually not the case. We just tell, so accept them with open arms and then we start nurturing and taking care of their thoughts and how they think and programming their brain to lean on you. That's not good to keep a person trapped to where they can't use their own free will because they're never mature enough to use it. We got to help them get to that maturity. As a pastor, you should be helping the children and the men and the women mature to your level. Never think, oh, I'm That's always right. be above them. A pastor should have everybody in his congregation on his level of intelligence, of what? Craftsmanship, study, research, development. All the pastors should take up other languages so that they could be linguists. Imagine how many people you have in your congregation then speaking all them different languages. Hmm? You remember Dr. York did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more magnetic. You can reach a lot more people speaking in other languages. Trust me on that now. That's leadership quality. So our pastors, in order for them to be great to me and my, from my perspective, they have to literally be providing for the community. Not spiritual, non-tangible gain, but tangible material gain with spiritual upliftment you let them know the value of life is given to all that are sitting here in this congregation no matter what your past may be or what your present may be we are here to help you then people don't come up in there shouting and throwing themselves all over the daggone floor they come in listening with a learned ear let me get my pen and paper today because pastor is teaching chemistry this week Oh, pastor might not be a chemist, but he uses the church's money to bring one to you. See? Let's pay one. This Sunday, we're going to have a live chemist giving us scientific expressions of life in existence so we can see the negative degrees and temperature, how it works, and the positive and how magnetism works. They're going to teach us electricity so we can work on the church's electricity. We have carpenters come in, teach the babies carpentry. We have linguists come in and teach different languages, Spanish, even old languages. You see, things that we just need to know, Arabic, Spanish, Chinese, Cantonese, Mandarin, whatever. We need to learn that stuff so that we can communicate with all other extraterrestrial life forms on this planet, all other aliens, all other Ali ands, all other sun gods. Right. They're all on the planet. We're part of a solar force. That solar force has been divided and split into a spectrum. We are, we are all here to do a job. Some of us are part of the destructive force. Some of us are part of the neutral. Some of us are part of the abundant force. We're given a lot, but we got to watch out because somebody's out to get you. When you got everything, you're the herbivore. You're spoiled a little bit. You don't really know if your alertness has been taken from you because of domestication. You've been domesticated. You don't know how to look out for the wolves no more. So it could be a wolf right there in sheep's clothing as your pastor in the church. Right. Right there. Doing things with your, you know, you know what, your children and things with your wife. <laughs> and because you worship them or think that the pastor is higher than you, you will allow it. You think you that's need given, your pastor to get in heaven. You need him to get in heaven. That's what they have tricked you into thinking. You know why? Because the, the sheep 
need the shepherd to get into a safe zone out of the weather conditions, away from the wolves, away from other things. They corral them and put them in a barn. That's the heaven for the cattle. That's right. Safe haven. Heaven haven. Same word. Same word. You hit it, right there. Safe haven. So once we get them in there, they safe, and then we protect them. We got sheep dogs. Now that's the dog that's domesticated, knows his job. We feed him. We give him everything he wants, so he does what we say. The cops play that role on the streets. Sheep dogs and wolves. Because they hound on the sheep. Right. Pastors, same thing. You got to have a deacon. You got to have the Person. usher board mm -hmm. to direct the cattle. You got to have your nurses board. All of that's needed. There's people up in there with conditions, passing out, heart conditions, high blood pressure and things because they're misguided. And they're looking for God to heal them. Guidance. <laughs> oh, man, that's, oh, man, they got That's, that's <laughs> right. They're they looking for guidance and guidance is God. Dang. The pastor that can give you the proper guidance is a good God. The pastor that takes you for everything you got is a horrible, defiled demon God. That's right. And he performs the best. The humble pastors, like I said, they herbivores, they don't have much. The omnivores have a little bit. They have, you know, they're in the middle somewhere on their finance. They take care of things. But I guarantee you, if you do this, you stop preaching the word. Stop being all about words. And start providing for your congregation. They will never leave. Your church. Right. You God. They need you. Right. And the church ain't going to be about worship. The church is going to be about growth and development. That's you have to it. have a scientific research hall in your church, in GD. the basement. Gave yeah. Disciples. Yeah. Growth and development. Disciples of growth and development. The gang of stars or, you know, stars of gang. Mm hmm. Right. So if we want to flip it and take the word gangster and make it something good with positive energy in thinking, we can do that because we can reverse the spells in our thinking. That's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We're taking the bad negative connotation of church that has been put on it. And we can reverse it by keeping the church, but changing the energy in the church and not making it about performing and entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the singing and the music and the dancing and the drums yes. and the shouting and the, come on, man. Let's do all of that and really call it what it is. A party. Concert. <laughs> yeah, let's call it what it is. Hey, we're going to have a concert this Sunday. We're uh, uh, taking donations at the door, $10 admission <laughs> donations, and we're going to take this money and we got a plot of land that we want the, our people to have. We're going to grow food on this land and we're going to open a grocery store on this land for our people. That's the pastor's job. But if he's always in his Bible studying and he's always going, I got to study. I got to study the book. I got a sermon coming up. I got to study. He's stuck in a box. He can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. And he got everybody trapped in it with him. This is why the lady said, give our money, husband, to the church, because God said so, because it's God's money. <laughs> the pastor pocket. She, yeah, she'll really think that in her within her imagination that there's another masculine force that's an individual masculine force. No, sister. All the men on the planet are G-O-D gods, and all the women are G-O-D-D-E-S-S goddesses. Right. You see? Goddesses. You see? So there's, there's no one amongst us that's bigger, badder, and better than all of us. Because the minute that dude shows up, another dude shows up that's bigger than him. Mm -hmm. So your God will be challenged. Why do you think there's a ritual of 
competition amongst men for the right to rule over the family bloodline, not the world. It's not the world, y'all. It's per household. A man that come in your house and fight you for your woman. She'll make y'all fight to choose for the kingdom. Whose kingdom? Yours. <laughs> right there in the house, you got T'Challa fighting Killmonger. Right there. And you'll be going, where you go get this? You know what I mean? I've been taking care of you for 10 years. You know, went out to the club, met this nigga. And all of a sudden, now you see, you got him up in here. I come home from work. Now I got to kill this nigga, get him up out of here. Right. That's a fight. That's a war for territory. Who's going to win that? Rams and do it why? all the time. Exactly. Lions do it too. Bears. You got to be on your stuff, meaning a male, if you're going to be the true savior in your house, be on point, not just with your weaponry, but know how to use everything that you got, plus also know how to use what you got. Yeah, right. (laughs) Your body, exercise. Stay dangerous. Yes. Run. Be serious. Be from serious Be. See? So that you can stay serious to protect her. Not serious on her. Don't be going upside her head. Yeah, right. Don't do that. She'll kill you. At the end of the day, you are a strong masculine force when you're woke. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, man. I, I figured it out, pretty. I figured it yeah. out. Uh the God power and all this the, the uh science behind it. Uh now uh, my wife. Uh, at first, what I used to say to my wife, I was God, right? And she, you know, she just say, "Oh no, you're not God," because her concept of God is what the Bible, what the, what her pastor said. That's the, that's the concept of God. Now, I, I, I was trying to explain to her, God is who you need. God, when you when somebody when God is dependable, God is somebody that's dependable. You can depend on God to come through for you every time. That's what they say, right? God going to come. He ain't might not come when you need him, but right. he always come on time. <laughs> and what else? Hey, big bro, what else <laughs> does the pins catch? The pins catch. Oh, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> what else does the pins catch? Oh, the pins catch. That's a good question. What does it catch? What you got? What you got on there? It that? catches... Shit. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. So a dependable man is always gonna catch the shit. Yeah, it's gonna roll. Hey, what they say? Shit rolls out here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and old people wear diapers called depends. Then they do. Then and babies used to wear them. They used to put depends on babies. It's a reusable diaper. One that you pin up on the sides with a safety pin catches the poop and the pee yeah. that they can't control. So making you dependable, your dependable force, if you're dependable, there's an example of how much hell you're going to catch being dependable because everybody right. will hey. come to you to use you up. That's right, 15. And then another part to that, too, is that when, when, when you fail... When you fail in their eyesight, or when you don't come through that one time, now you are do you a devil. You you ain't God no more. See, you 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 the when you once you fail when 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 they not not necessarily when you fail, but when you give them advice or as they God, and then that shit don't work. Now they they question. They finna question God, and that's why they put the mechanism in. Don't question God. Don't ask no questions. Don't ask no questions. <laughs> Don't ask no questions because if you start asking questions in God, then you're going to find out his whole game plan is a little shaky. He an Oz nigga, little bitty midget nigga, a three foot tall, talking shit over the phone like a big nigga. Then when right. you get to see him in person, he a little two foot nigga uh, and you fragile like you can pick him up and throw him through a window or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. But those small things are to be respected in nature because they could be just as vicious and dangerous now. Right. I don't know too many things that want to run up on a honey badger or a wolverine or 
a Tasmanian devil. Now those things are small. Yes, sir. But they tear into you like a hot knife through butter. And you'll be going, ah, he just bit off my toe in one bite. <laughs> he didn't have to gnaw on it at all. Just chew right, <laughs> straight, bit right down straight through. Down through. <laughs> <laughs> clean cut, clean cut. That's how they do. They got strong jaws. So there's some small things out here with a lot of force and a lot oh, of yeah, power yeah. in their bite. Because small things, now I'm about to teach y'all something. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Small things are dangerous when they're toxic. Think about what I'm saying. If yeah. there's a man yeah. out here and he's small, his defense is a toxin. Man, you a deep. lot of times his toxin could be in the form of his weapon, his words, how he thinks. All of that is combined together. He'll use toxins to defend himself and herself. A small woman is deadly. Think you're going to just keep taking advantage of her? Uh-uh. She'll poison your food. You'll die slow. Wonder where your cancer came from. Nigga ain't going to keep beating on me. They get smart. Smarter, you have to be wittier. You have to be sharper. You got to be quicker when you're smaller. All the smaller animals' heartbeats faster. So they think faster. They're breathing faster. Their mm -hmm. reflex movement is almost glitchy. You ever see a squirrel moving and how yeah, it stops yeah, yeah. and the tail stops too? You'd be like, damn, the tail didn't even just, like a dog's keep on moving when he just, he just you know, but a squirrel, mm -mm, they show you they focused on everything. <laughs> everything cats small faster heartbeats they even purr their vibration come right out <laughs> you know and they're highly alert and they're quick the reflexes of everything small usually very fast except for a snail or a slug or something you see so the speed is in the size speed i'm larger than my wife my heartbeat a lot slower i also am capable of taking deeper breaths and expanding my lungs because i have a larger chest my shoulder width is larger so if i'm breathing i can take in more air my upper body frame is designed for that and we're supposed to breathe in from the chest diaphragm all the way down into the gut your stomach is supposed to expand your gut, not your stomach, but your gut, lower than your stomach, down in your intestinal areas is supposed to expand with air. You're supposed to be able to feed that down into there and then come back up with air and breathe out. But most of us don't breathe deep enough to get it down into our gut. So just by that will cause malfunctions in the system, defects in your breathing, asthma, can't run for long, short-windedness, as they call it, shorter breath or uh, mucus in the lungs, anything that you want to call it, but all of it goes hand in hand with this breathing condition that you can acquire by not getting enough exercise as a man. With a big enough frame in the chest area to do so, because you're designed to be able to take in maximum amounts of air and also produce maximum amounts of energy from that air you take in. And I use the big brother, Mark Henry, as an example, because he once held the record of the strongest man in the world, right? On earth, he held that record. When he was about to do lift his uh, right. uh, max and, and beat his last record, nobody else could beat it but him. He came in and got ready to grab the weight. And before he did, he hyped himself up and he was breathing real hard, fast and intense and gathering energy and chi from the actual air. That's what a charge is. It's in the air. Hey. Charged particles, negative and positive particles. He was breathing in and feeding and fueling that to the muscles that he had formed and produced through exercise. Not just with a mass frame and a mass amount of bone density to help sustain the, the, the weight. Because if you don't, the, the weight will break your bone. 
So you have to be a big enough bone structure. These dudes back in ancient times were your Goliaths. You don't want to see him with body armor on running through uh, uh, your offensive line <clears throat> with pads on. Anybody that he puts his helmet in their chest, he going to hurt real bad. That's how thick and dense this dude's frame was. And he's still alive to this day. He's a good brother. But he don't acknowledge himself as God because of religion. His mom always taught him what? God is what? An outside force. Yeah. Not, a, not a down here on the earth force. No, we're the God that came down or in to the planet. The God force, the masculine force that they're talking about in the Bible. I still think it was a tool to use to trap women. Though. I think the Bible is used to, to, to say, hey, women are, are uh, bad and they need men to tell them what to do. The Bible will tell you off rip. Yeah, it's ambiguous. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's letting you know it does go both ways. You know, the, the women have some say so in the book, but they tend to blame the, all of the world's negativity on women. That's right. She ate the fruit. It's because of her eating the fruit. You know why? You know That's why? not the right. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, like, it's because she represents the negative aspect of energy, the life force. Remember when I was saying that the light bulb can't come on if you disconnect the negative right. from the positive, can it? That's right. So she, her force is needed. And in material sense, she represents that in the form of a body, not in her essence. So I said negative doesn't mean bad. People can't equate the two. If they think negative means bad, then they'll think women are bad, which is what certain cultures did. They started whipping on the woman and restraining the woman and calling her a witch and that were performing rituals to get demons out of her and things of that nature because they didn't understand. Men of other cultures did this. This is as far back as 1800s, 1700s, 1600s, 1500s, 1400s. The men was a governing force for the women for some daggone reason. They were treating the women like she had a severe problem. I went back and looked at this. And y'all can go back and look at videos of it too. Especially Caucasian women, man. White women had it bad. Our women went, ain't really going to go for it like that, to be honest with you. The only time they had it bad is during their servitude times. I call it uh, extreme early employment. <laughs> and it was bad so they got molested and raped around that time by the same man that molested and raped his own woman in ancient times before so he was just passing off his energy and his seed the way he knows how he didn't think anything was wrong with it why because he felt as though he deserved it that's what a carnivore does they take what they want when they feel like they provided enough to get it and they're not going to let you say no. Remember that stuff I got you? The dress and the, and the stuff in the yeah. And that's later. But back in the plantation, it was, you live here on my land. And if you don't do as I say, I'll kill your husband and your kids. You see? God. God. Yeah. He becomes your God, but in a tyrannic fashion. Yeah, a tyrant. He's a tyrant. Disagreeable or a complete cold-hearted negative being that acts like he's warm-hearted. They call it frost bite because it's biting you. If it's biting you, it's eating you. If it's eating you, it's carnivorous. And you know how I say that, you know, the Caucasian species is the transparent version of Negroes from ancient times evolved into the Caucasian over degenerate genetics. That don't mean they're stupid. They're very intelligent. They're carnivores. They got to be the best hunters. Trust me on that. They will track you and find you. We used to be the best hunters. But we get relaxed because we don't necessarily need to hunt to live. They do. That don't mean, that don't mean they're evil. No, sir. It's nothing bad about them wanting to live, is it? People go, well, why they got to do what they do? Because they, they'll die if they don't. And they don't really know how to be any other way unless they mix with us. Then when they mix right. with us, they go back into what we call the bosom right. of the most high. 
because we represent the hottest form of the spectrum and we'll help rise them up in purity and purify them because they mix with us, we're representing the heat. Now, if I share my screen and show you, there's a positive symbol. And if you elongate the bottom half of the positive symbol, it represents the rise of the positive energy. So they'll show a cross sticking out of the ground when it's an elongated what? Positive symbol plus that represents heat. That's what it represents. As the cross symbol, it represents heat rising. See, the cross right. represents the rise of positive energy. And positive energy comes from the sun. So therefore, we got to learn how to make sure we conduct ourselves by this way and we won't get tricked by any religious forces. A religious force won't be able to trick you. A shepherd, a pastor, he'll be good for what he's good for when you need him as a child. As soon as you get older, you know, I'm talking about the religious, the, the spell binding, entertaining churches. The churches that are going to do the plan that I was talking about, they're going to feed the community by way of the community's money. They're going to be like the bank for the community. And they're going to have a business in order. Those are black communities or Nubian or urban communities that you'll see thriving. They'll be clean. They'll be gated communities, mm -hmm. suburban communities. Because we'll establish a construction company with the people that come to the church. How many strong, able-bodied men we got here? Round them up. Show By a show of voluntary hands, who wants to learn how to do construction? You will get paid for it. But this is for your grandmother, this is for your mother, this is for your daughter, this is for your wives. We're gonna build a neighborhood. See, you remodel the houses they live in if they don't wanna move. They be like, I ain't moving this house, been in my family since generations upon generations. Then you go, fine mother, we'll come over and we'll remodel it for you. That's right, it's, it's churches are doing that. I know that this church is doing it. The Man, Catholic, thank you to those them. churches that do that. Yeah, the Catholics, man, you may not believe it, man, but the Catholics do a lot of that. The Catholics. Mm -hmm. You better non-tax money. The churches, man, I'm trying to tell you that 501c3, they got there under. These mugs got non-tax money coming to them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how are they taking the church's money and the people's money in the church and not feeding the people, man? Now, you got beans, you got beans out there that buy, oh, yeah, I got to get that new airplane, man. It just came out. You know what I'm saying? It's but, madness, bro. Yeah, the new airplane. The and the off. main people that be right up, sorry for talking over top of you. Forget no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The main people, bro, that be promoting it, that fund it, are the mothers. That's They're it. the main ones. It's like they're seeking salvation through some unknown essence when they don't need it. They stand within their own right in nature. They don't need anybody to tell them whether they're doing bad or good. They know. You feel it internally. You know when you messed up. And if you don't, nature going to teach you. Energy strikes back. You can't just hit energy. Energy going to hit back. So you grow and you learn. But you will learn. If I stagnate your growth, and I make you ignore the value of studying nature and you come to church and you learn worship and you learn to follow a God and you learn to look for that God and stay in search for that God and you'll never find it because it's not tangible. When I was thinking about it thoroughly enough, I found out how this particular God and the image of it can be real. I found the authenticity of Jesus in every man. But to say that Jesus is one man, well, that's me That's me right. telling you a story. I'm just telling you a story to talk about all the men. I'm rounding them all up in one because we all come from the one anyway. Out of the one anyway. And that's the first Spread chapter out. in the book of John. They own Bible. That's the first chapter. You say the same light, the light of every man that come into the world. They tell you right See? there. See? So it's known knowledge. Nothing that I'm talking about is new. It's just an awareness that's being 
um, that's been forgotten that most people are becoming aware of again. Because people are waking, we call it waking up or unawakening, or as Dr. Delbert Blair would say, a quickening. And that's what it is. We're getting faster, more intelligent, that is, sharper, keener. We can see clearly. You know, all the obstacles, we can see them. Ain't that how that song go? I can see clearly now the rain is yeah. gone. Yeah. I can see all obstacles in my way. Yeah, the, 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 the obstacles, that's another thing that you, uh, I'm glad you said mm -hmm. obstacles. Obstacles as a God to as, in training here, because we gods in training, uh, obstacles will be put into your, your path. Now those, like when I was in the military, <laughs> Uh, and I'm making short so you can keep on going because it's really your show. I was gonna make it short. Uh, and we, when I was in the military, we had obstacles, but those obstacles was to get make us overcome certain fears. Like we had a op, we had a one obstacle called Victory Tower, which is like as in this, uh, my people that went to South Carolina for Jackson Relax Injection. Shout out my uh, my guys at Relax Injection. Uh, they had a, a tower that's like five or six stories high. You had to climb and then rappel down. Now, if you was afraid of heights, uh, that kind of was supposed to get you over the fear. So uh, these uh, there's obstacles placed here in front of us to get us over the fears. But these beings, these they want to worship these pastors who secretly want to uh, play the part of God because it all stems down from the Pope. The Pope is the, all these churches and shit come from the Pope. That, that are like all these Baptists, no matter what denomination you is, you a damn Catholic. And they got your shit from the Pope, and the Pope got his from Osiris going all the way back to the uh, ancient Kemet. So it's all stemming down to this one dude saying he God, and he talked to God, and he God, and you got to get all your shit from him. And that's what this science is all about. My bad for going so long, man. Oh, 15. Are you good, big brother? You good? I had to um, unmute it. Okay, okay. Yeah, you good. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I don't know. Did, does anybody have anything in the comments that they saying or anything, questions? Uh, or? Yeah, yeah. Y'all got any questions, drop them in the chat, man, because we already like two hours on this joint. This joint is hot. Yeah, and we ain't, you know, you know, we ain't got to stretch it all the way out. We can give yeah, them yeah, a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we hitting them back to back. Non-stop action. All right, so drop your chat. Drop your... Uh, Stuff in the chat, man. Right on, right on. <laughs> hey, to sum it up though, why they need worship? Because they need the money. Worship simple. <laughs> worship to me is money. Hey, look. Well, I mean, uh it definitely. Yeah. You know, it's attention, it's focus. When somebody is worshiping you, they're focused on your well-being. Yeah. You know, and they'll yeah. go to war for you too. Yeah, we gotta think the word ship is in it because it's a movement. Yeah, it's a moving force. Yeah, worship is not something that sits still. So, who are you moving? You're moving whoever it is you worship. That's right. You know, and that's why I call it the warship because if that person or that being that you worship tells you to go do something to put your life on the line or take somebody else's life, you'll do it. Yep, you become a war ship. Your ship mm -hmm. trying to use it for war. A daggone battleship. And you're out there causing, wreaking havoc by the word of a man. The word of somebody that's got the same status here on this planet really as you do. But you gave them all kinds of power over using your life force for whatever his personal gain or her personal gain may be. That right there should not be in my eyes, I don't think it's necessary because your mother and father are the only rules over you until you learn how to rule over yourself. And then there's still living presence and forces to help you guide in case you got questions. Mm -hmm. That's what your grandfather and daddy is there for. You want to know why are you think in a certain way? Go talk to your pops because it's obvious somewhere in his brain, he was thinking that too when he was younger or at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And then you might trigger a conversation, which is a genetic conversation, Then your pops will sit down with you and be like, yeah, man, I used to be like that too. 
you go for real like yeah you know i don't really talk about it but you know i struggle with a couple <laughs> of things and your dad don't he won't because his flaws he you know he want to bury him but if you open them up you'll find out how much you and your pops got in common not just on on y'all you being his son but on right. the male on the male sense the male energy and he'll show you why you are the way you are and it'll make more sense for you to to be the way you are without thinking something is fully wrong. You're like, man, ain't nothing wrong with me, man. You, you know who my daddy is? <laughs> right. I'm just like my daddy. And my daddy was like his daddy. And I'm a more refined version, and he was a more refined version of his pops. We just keep getting better. That's the way right. We live. You know, we live off of our family way. Our family has a discipline of its own. That's why the each family has to have a code. Yeah, just certain things that y'all just don't do. Your family, there's certain things that we just don't do. You know what that I'm saying? That you shouldn't. Do what you get frowned upon now because they're finding out certain grandbabies being misled by social media to do it. You see? Because they took the daddies out of the home. So the gods are not the, there to enforce discipline. They're not there. You know, the police force enforces discipline now. The jail system enforces discipline now. And they send all the daddies there. So they're going, daddies are bad, and women can do no bad. Throw so all these daddies in prison early, and then the women that come to us in prison. We got a prison for them too. Because we abandoned the women, they had to fend for themselves, therefore committing crimes too. They didn't leave them no choice. This is a chess move. This is strategy. Because if you say whoever you need is your God, then they have to create a condition for you to need. So now you go money, go ahead. Money is that need. How did they create the need for money? They created a bill matrix. A bill matrix deals with anything that deals with the word bill. Paper trail, paper, two-dimensional energy, not three, two. Everything is done in the second dimension on paper. So you bring it down and lower it down a level. So yeah. it's a degrees under nature, the paper is. So they restored the force or put the force of water in a fictitious way in the form of paper. Not just that. It flows like water, but it's the color of green, which is the very life force we breathe from. Now, y'all want to talk about magic. Let's talk about the spell of money and the spell of paying bills to where you need the money to pay the bills. You need the bills to have heat in your house, hot water, cold water, and other things that you like that you can use robbing you of the ability to give your house heat from your own knowledge and will robbing you of your ability to craft and build a house design one become an architect they rob you of all the ability to become the greatest god you can become they rob you of that who are they need that's why in the money it says, in God we trust, because there's a need for it. the money. Therefore, there's a need for God. The face on the money is a Caucasian. It's not Nubians. Nubians have their faces on their money over in the motherland, on the mother continent. But there is money with Nubian faces on it. It's just the value of it. It's not accepted in certain social clubs. America's type of social club. Well, we think our paper, our two-dimensional knowledge and energy is worth more than the third-dimensional knowledge and energy. And it's not. But they created a need for it. Now, how many of us need the money? We all do. Because we all got bills. <laughs> right. And y'all have heard me say this twist before. Those that have been listening to me for about a year or so now know that I say the word bill is the letter B, which is the word B, which is spelled B-E. And then you got the word ill, which is I-L-L. -L. 
So you got be ill, which means they keep us in a traumatic state of sickness and disease, disharmony. And that creates a need because out of chaos comes opportunity. Comes order. The opportunity comes along with that. How many orders is going to come out of the chaos? Because everybody right. starts up one. As soon as the chaos ensues, everybody starts together. The leaders and figureheads start to take advantage of the weak right there in that moment. Think about it. Every time there's a, a pandemic call over social media, which is a few test runs to let you know how fast the mind altering devices to program us can work. It's rapid now. They can make happen in days what used to take them a whole year. That's right. They can move us, meaning by getting us to think a certain way because the, the head leads the body. So if they can control what's inside the head, then the, everything that they want you to do, you'll do. And there's nothing that you can say about it because you'll be doing it thinking that you want to do it. Therefore, hijacking your own personal willpower and creating a need for their choices. We run around with the phone in our hands right now, everywhere we go, looking down at it, unaware of our surroundings, crossing the street, looking at the phone, getting on the bus, right. looking at the phone, getting on the train, looking at the phone, getting in your car, looking at the phone, driving down the road, looking at the phone. Make a song looking at the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just real, man. You know, they did it to us on purpose. The technology is replacing the brain. And what's in the brain is the inner eye. Hence, for what's taking over your brain is an iPhone. Damn. Everybody's got one. It's replacing your intelligence. Because now we don't go to nothing but the phone to think. Go to the phone real quick. Let's do this. Let's do that. They're doing this on purpose so that we don't know how to take care of ourselves, therefore creating a need for us to follow lead from the government. Yeah. God, for the government to become our God. Yeah. And Project Blue Bean is so in effect right now, it ain't even funny. They started it over in the Middle East, and then they started it in Asia, and then they brought it over here. What is Project Blue Bean? Y'all just look it up. Those that know, know. Yeah. They know. I will not fall for anything that they project in the sky. Not I. Not me. Yeah, we was thinking that uh, I posted a picture that we think that uh, they use that to create this dragon uh, type creature in the sky. Um, we still doing more research on that, but... Uh, we have reason to believe it was used over in England uh, to make a to make a dragon image uh, in the sky. Yeah, I've seen a lot of things now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of things projected over my phone. UFOs, all kinds. Yeah, of stuff. Yep. I've seen a lot of that stuff, but I what I have not seen. See, what I be thinking is, when I see stuff like that, I'll go, hmm. Do they, is this really going on or do they just want us to see what they're capable of? Now, at the That's end of it, it, how does it affect us? If there was this such a thing that they showed us, whatever it may be, it could be anything. It could be a big monster. It could be a dragon. It could be a, a, a whale floating around in the, in the sky. It could be a, a castle in the clouds, above the clouds. It could be uh, the image of a large man walking on a mountain from a great distance. Like, you got to ask yourself, things got to come into play. Logic has to come into play when you think about it. Depth perception has to come into play when you're thinking about it. People don't think about depth perception and how far your naked eye is trained to see. You can't see that damn far things fade out of you in, into a point. So if you're looking at something in the sky, it would appear very tiny to you. If it was real, this is what people are not looking at. They're not using the natural brain. 
They're using the entertainment brain. The are you not entertained? Have I not killed <laughs> enough for you? Brain. Have I not shown you enough excitement? Brain. A blood. The brain. Guts. Yeah. Or enough magic. Enough wonder. It's to keep us occupied. So we don't know what they're doing, which is locking down fertility. While we allow it. And we will, because we prefer money over babies, cars, clothes. We prefer mansions. We prefer how we look over babies. Damn. That's here. That's here. I'm serious. Like in America, that's here. That's true. That's true. That was a psyops done on the women. They did a, a Illuminati rituals on women back in the goddamn early hundreds to lock y'all down. And now look at us. See, we frown upon women having babies, man. And we'll act like we celebrated. Oh, yeah, man, that's great, man. You had a great sister. You had a baby. Congratulations. We'll, we'll say the words. But if she's dealing with mental stress, taking care of the child, who's going to step up and say, I got you. I'm going to help you. It's usually going to be another woman that understands her position. A little girl or a teenage girl, maybe, or another young adult girl will help that woman with that experience because she's looking forward to it. So she'll be there to go through the learning process and help at the same time, hands-on learning. Can't beat that experience. So when she becomes a mother, she's already pre-prepared. She helped another woman. That's how she got prepared. Her mom was involved. Grandma was involved. Women helping women is how women teach women how to be women. Not by hating and bashing the male energy, because men teaching other men is how men learn how to be men. Thanks. I'm serious. Like they messed us up taking the daddies out of the home or making it so hard and disturbing for dad to be in the home. He just left. Why? Because the bills. He never had to worry about bills in nature. The man could just go out there and build. It wasn't bills he was worried about. It was more him getting attacked or him having to fight to sustain what he just built because a carnivorous man to come right on in and be like, I like that house. I'm taking that. Get on up out of here. We're going to kill you. And you'd be going, damn. I've been building this for a whole year. How y'all find my spot? I was just about to move my family in. They don't care. If I go on move, man, we'll take them two from you. And back then, in that time period, they would have killed you. So a man's odds of living and surviving made him a living, willing sacrifice in nature for the woman and the child. He's always up against the odds of death. Even right now, me driving this truck, I'm up against the odds of death as we speak. Right. We go out there, mechanics up against the odds. How many mechanics, you know, lose hands? Lose arms, lose a foot. See, losing fingers. Trying to help somebody fix their daggone mechanisms. In the car. Also, we can live a certain way. But the man is dealing with the most outlandish pain. And the woman deals with the most internal pain. But we both dealing with pain that I think we should acknowledge. <clears throat> when your wife has her cycle, does she ever ask you to rub her stomach? Put heat on it? Right. Because it helps her. So she needs the warmth of your hot male energy that your male energy is hot as the sun. So you bring that warmth to her in that moment. But she needs it. It helps soothe the pain, rubbing it. But then if a dude is out there going, I got to get this money, I ain't got time, she grows bitter because you are out of your purpose, but also in your purpose. Somebody gave you the need to get money 
So the need for money replaces her needs. Because money becomes the God of both of you. Money is the God that sustains and takes care of the bills. And the bills is the God that sustains your life in your comfort zone. Without your electricity and power to the house, you'll lose your mind now. Without hot water, you'll go crazy. You're domesticated. We've been well kept for so long, we last lost our natural ability to live. So somebody has usurped your willpower. How did they do it? We're talking about it. Mind control and manipulation through different types of spells and different craftsmen and different art forms, different wordplay, different languages, different videos, a whole plethora of chess pieces. Because they play everybody. Who does? The ones that make the most money. It's not exclusive to white and right. black when it comes to that. It's not. It's everybody that's wealthy that wants to stay wealthy. And if you're stupid enough to help them keep and stay wealthy or not stupid enough, maybe supportive enough. Because it ain't always about stupidity. Some people want to see others do good. <laughs> You know, they hear, like I said, there's a herbivore mentality here as well that has a lot of things in abundance. And they'll be your best givers because they got it coming, you know, in large amounts. And they're not going to miss any of it. <clears throat> but if they don't have it coming in large amounts and they need it, then they'll miss it when they give it to you. They shouldn't give it to you. And you shouldn't take it from them in most cases, unless you can reciprocate. If you're dealing with an omnivore, you need to be able to reciprocate energy to keep the omnivore satisfied. You're dealing with a carnivore, you're going to need to give a whole damn going lot in order for him to be satisfied. And they're going to keep taking until you're dead. And then they're going to take some more because that's what carnivores do. But if you deal with that herbivore, man, he'll be your best friend. But you're also looking at him like, man, this dude must be stupid because he, he just gives and gives and gives. Like, yeah, these mentalities are realistic. We all deal with them, but we always looking somewhere else to identify. We're going astrology. Let's look there. Look into the look into the animal zoo types of the and look into this and look into that when it's right in front of our face and three levels and three degrees and three examples. Solid, liquid, gas, carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, neutral, positive, negative. Those are the laws right there. You go with those laws when you think about things and can't nobody lie to you. Not just studying the patterns of a person, they can't lie to you if you're using nature as a measuring stick for everything. Nature. Big bro, any, anybody ask any questions? I'm sure I didn't put it. Oh, yeah, we got asleep. a lot of questions. Somebody you said, sure? Oh, yeah, we got yeah, we got a lot of questions. Sound like I didn't put niggas to sleep. <laughs> no, no, we got a lot of questions. Uh, they was at they was when we had asked the first time, they came out and started asking the questions. I was just waiting on you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, so tell them good, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry, y'all, about that. Oh, no, yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. They good. They good. Uh, we got about almost 300 people up in this joint, man, in the middle of the night. So we we lit. We lit. Uh, let me find that first question. So it says X15. I think. What does the cities? I can't remember. What's it? Let me find that question. Was it ahead? What? Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Did they get it? Uh, dang, I hope it ain't get. Uh, <laughs> Because I thought it was right, right. Okay, here we go, right, right up in here. What he asked, uh, one said that we have our before it was talking about telepathic abilities. Hold up, uh, I just seen it, man. Hold on, just give me a second, y'all. I'm trying to scroll back up to the questions. Hey, could y'all re ask those questions because it scrolled all the way out to where it don't let me pull all the way back up to the what the questions was. I, was, I should have wrote them down. Someone was telling me to write them down. I was trying to hold that spot, but it, it, it clicked off. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I think one of the questions were they were asking about 
uh do the do the cities connect how do the cities connect with feminine energy or some of that nature hey we ask those questions that y'all just ask those people uh because uh they got folks i can't read them now because they got uh put up out of the deal hmm. you did crack hey you cracked heads tonight <laughs> that word man. Need, you know, i'm gonna start looking into that man because when i when i i need i need uh, I, I remember a dude said, uh, I had some funny shit, though. I remember a dude, while they put it in the questions, he said, hey, I, I said, it's a funny dude. A dude told a funny story. It was his old man dating this young chick, right? Mm-hmm. And he named, uh, he said that uh, the, the, a young cat came along and took her, right? Mm-hmm. And so he found the young cat number and called him. And he said, man, you can have her because her name, I need her. I need her. <laughs> I need it. I need a, I need some money for my hair. I need this. Need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you I got, it, you got it. Her her name is spelled uh A N I T A though. Like Anita Baker. Yeah, yeah. Like Anita Baker. <laughs> yeah, like Anita Baker, right? That's her name though. Anita. Yeah, I need Anita. this. I need it. That I need it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. And he said, That's a yeah, joke he, right there. Go it, ahead. Yeah, he said you take it out. Uh, and it's like a true story. It's on YouTube. He said, "You take it off my hands, cause her, her, she, her name. You must forget her name, Anita. See, Man. I know what you don't know, young blood. I know what you don't know, young blood. See, when you get over there, she gonna be. I need this. I need that. And then, <laughs> hey, I give you about two weeks, young blood. She'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> cause you ain't a well established son yet." To provide for her everything she really needs. That's right. So she'll Hand be back God. to me, right? Because you're a young son. You ain't no old son like me. Mm-hmm. I'm a mature son. I know the game. I know what they need, know what they want, know what they're expecting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you ain't been through enough heat to know that. So I'm going to let you learn. I'm going to learn you, let you go through it, and then we're going to circle back around. That's how the <laughs> OGs do, man. I'm trying to tell you. They ain't worried about you getting a little bit, you know what I mean, a little yeah. action. They ain't worried about yeah. none of that. Yeah. Hey, hey, two weeks, nigga. Hey, I, I need it. She'll be back. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Lance. That's when we asked the question. Okay, Lance, he was the first one. All right, Lance, we got you. Said, ask the 15th, do cities carry the energy of a goddess of feminine energy? Do cities carry the energy of a goddess or feminine energy? Oh, um, well, you know, cities are definitely on on earth, you know. Yeah, most definitely the answer to that is yes. You know, feminine energy is everywhere. Mm-hmm. If you deal with the energy of the cool, you know, you're dealing with a feminine energy. You're dealing with warm energy. You're dealing with feminine energy, right? Yeah. So procreative forces are those temperatures and they exist within the city. If you look at the word city in itself, it's a play on the vowels. Change the Y, because it's sometimes Y, right? Yeah. A-E-I-O-U. If you take the Y and you turn it into an E, then the word is not city, it's sight. That's right. So it's letting you know the city deals with visibility. Humans feel safe in a city where they can see things. Because there's light in the city, electricity in the city. The city is there to be illuminated for the feminine protection. Because without light, she's vulnerable. That's right. So there has to be lights. If there's a dark street and a woman is walking down a dark street, man, the wolves is lurking. And they out there just looking at her from a distance going, I'm going to get that. So the light represents visibility in the city, which represents the sight. And the protection of it. So there's value in knowing that there is feminine energy present present everywhere, not just in the galaxy, but on the planet. It plays a part in the negative charge. The masculine energy plays a part in the positive charge. Remember how I said they're heat and cold, hot and cold. They're about degrees. So the feminine energy is everywhere and it's needed. The water. It's feminine when you, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when you get in the water, isn't it usually cold? I'm talking about nature's water now. Yeah. The only time nature's water come out hot is when it comes out of a geyser, if it comes out of the earth or springs. 
It can come out hot, but then it cools. It comes out hot because it's purified at a certain degree of temperature, meaning there's certain things that can't live in the heat. So it comes out clean enough. Now, and also the heat means it's highly alkaline and highly electrical, especially with the minerals and things in it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that brother's question is yes. Is there feminine energy in the city? Of course. And in some cities, it's in abundance. It's more in feminine energy than masculine. Therefore, you will have a whole lot more androgynous type behavior going on. Especially in certain cities, man. They really f force feeding the feminine energy on every aspect of life form in that town or city. And then you will have a bunch of homosexuals running around because they got the support. Yeah, Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, not Chicago, uh, San Francisco and Atlanta. Okay, I got another question. Mm -hmm. Before I go to that brother's question, I got a question for you because it, it just it just sparked my ima imagination. All right, so mm -hmm. the woman is based on moon energy, and the man is based on the sun energy. That makes sense with the process of the birth with the uh with the sperm being the light. And it goes into the moon energy, and you know, saying the one is a part of the planet. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, watch you this. Know. Watch ahead, this. I feel more that the moon is child energy. Okay, children, the planet is is the woman energy, and the children pull on the woman. That's right. I think about this. So the moon is what pulls on the planet. The women think more about the moon, which is a reflection, which is that mirror then they really look and think about most things because the child is also a reflection of her beauty because she gave birth to the moon. Right. So I think of the moon as a child of the planet Earth that allows her to appreciate what she's done too as the sun appreciates the celestial body of the planet. The moon, so the, the, the sun and the Earth gave birth to the moon. It's pretty much mm -hmm. That's deep. That's deep. Yep. So it's a child of hers that revolves around her. She sustains it in her orbit the way she's locked and sustained in the solar orbit of the sun. That's why I said it's a child. It's being taught how to be what it's going to be if it wasn't already that before. Or it could be lost child of the planet one child that died you see what i'm saying a child that had life but now yeah, doesn't yeah. have its own life no more and it's pulls upon the energy of the planet because it can't directly absorb the energy of the sun because it reflects it uh -huh. so i would say yeah from my perspective I'm learning to look at the moon as as the child force. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for that. That's a good. That's a good perspective. I like that perspective. That's that's even more. That's, that's took me to another step on it. Put me another step on it. You know what I'm saying? Gave me another right. level to it. Yeah. Throw some seasoning on there. Yeah, gave me a little spice <laughs> and herbs up in that joint. <laughs> right, uh, the next question that we have for you, brother, in my side board. The next question we have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it says Anthony Johnson says, "Is reincarnation real?" Oh, uh, of course. I mean, that's just a word to describe the revolving door that we go out and come through. If breath is revolving in you and out of you constantly, and there's a gas exchange between us and plants that's constant, then existence is constant. So reincarnation has to be a constant. Indeed. It's a constant. So yes, reincarnation is real. There's many cultures that have expressions for it. You can pick which one you like, but I don't have to, you know, go into the cultural expressions. You can do that research on your own. I'm here to give you the natural expression. You'll see reincarnation in fruit, plants, vegetation, things that drop seeds. You'll see it in the birth of children, You'll see it in the birth of mammals, fish. Everything is reproducing. Re is to do again. Produce is to, uh, you know, give product. 
So we're producing and reproducing and the door hasn't closed on reproducing. So therefore there's reincarnation. It's just a different word for it. Indeed. I like I hope that answered the brother's question Man, in a you, short form. Yeah, you, you cracked his head, right? Like, nothing but pride to hear with that one. That's what you did. See? Like, uh, <laughs> so yeah. It definitely exists. So yeah, you, yeah you, you, I like your perspective, man. Your perspective is, is precise and crisp. You know what I'm saying? I like how you're guessing Chris' perspective. Uh, it says, so when it's all said and done, Earth will return to all women come the uh, women uh, plant or complex. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It, it, the Earth has different levels and realms to it. The material realm belongs to the females, just like in outer space, the primordial mist belongs to the feminine energy too. We govern each other. We revolve around each other as an energetic force. This planet will never be 100% feminine. It needs both energies. I, I uh, explained it a lot by teaching about circuits of electricity. What makes the planet move is the fact that there's feminine and masculine um, intertwined here. There would be no need for chromosomes. You see, the male is here because he's needed. If the planet is feminine dominant, it's all, I'm saying, if you remove the positive force of the male, by positive, I mean hot, heating force, heat force, okay? Not good and bad. If you remove that force, then what you're going to get is a disconnection of the circuit and the power will go out. What power? the power to reproduce and procreate. You don't have it without us. We don't have it without y'all. So it's needed. Now, if y'all wanted to be all female planet, y'all might not make it past a hundred years. Y'all will be dead inside of a hundred years. I'm talking about your physical form. It can't sustain itself without the, the positive because the energy, the power is cut. Therefore, the reproduction or uh, uh, how they call it, procreation is cut. If that's cut off, there is no us in physical form. We only exist in the other states. Gas, liquid, solid, individually. The woman owns the material realm because she gives us a material body to exist in to give her a helping hand anyway. She has the upper hand there. We have the upper hand on protecting her. She wants to protect herself, but nature doesn't say so. Nature doesn't say so. She can say so all she wants when she's not in her proper state. A woman in her proper state desires a man to protect her but she has to get the right one. She can't get the right one because God has been removed from her psyche and household, which is her daddy. Her granddad has been removed from her psyche. Those that have a granddad nowadays think the granddad did everything grandma said do. So they don't respect him as an authority, meaning they don't go to him for advice. They only go to him for some money or when they need something fixed, they go to grandma for the advice. Will this planet ever be one where just women can rule? The genetic reproduction system has to be changed and I don't see that changing unless something changes in the galaxies to change it. And it has to not happen there. Actually, it has to happen in the quantum realm first. So everything in the quantum realm will have to go feminine. How is that? It's not gonna be. You ever wonder why God never kills the devil or gets rid of the devil? Both forces are needed. That's why I don't believe in no God and the devil. <laughs> I just use it as a metaphor. Because you wouldn't know who God was if you didn't know who the devil was. If you didn't know who the devil was. If you didn't know who God. They both got to exist in order to legitimize each other. To be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wouldn't know what a woman was if you didn't have a man. You wouldn't know what a man is if you didn't have a woman. Hey, we got we got somebody, uh Barbara's is uh I think she's a Muslim. 
from Islam to Baba. Yeah, Islam. But, uh, Islam but she she attacking us with the Quran. She say the Quran don't say nothing about reincarnation or coming back. The Quran right? is a book. The Quran is a book. I don't care what it don't say about reincarnation. Because reincarnation is not in the culture of the Quran. It's in another culture. However, the knowledge came through man, woman, in a different form, just because it wasn't our form as Muslims don't mean it's not a form. Their understanding of life is considered like yours. What puts our understanding or understanding of life over anyone else's? I had to learn to combine them all to see the big picture. If you want to keep one piece of the puzzle, which is Islam, a discipline, then that's her choice. I can't be mad at her for that. I'm just asking her not to pass judgment on us or what we say from a book. The book is not our judgment. And it's not our damnation either. And what I say is not my judgment and my damnation. I'm giving my awareness, my point of view. That's all that book is. The points of views of many men that came that established and helped create that order or put those scriptures or scripts in order or surahs or sunnahs or however y'all want to pronounce it. But there is a script in there, sis. The script tells you what to do, tells you what your role would be in this particular game here. And it's a disciplinary book that came from an age in time where granddad had to make sure when he left, his offspring stayed within the guidelines of discipline. This is where the God concept comes from. It does not come from anywhere else but discipline. So if you can say the Quran don't say nothing about reincarnation, we can talk and look at the, the Hindu traditions or any other traditions that go against or have their philosophy that doesn't line up with everything the Quran says, and then they can point and say the same thing you're saying. It just keeps working like that because nobody's going to yield and give in on their ideas. Your ideas came through your creative force of will. So you're allowed to have them. But nobody will correct me or anybody that I have as offspring again with a book. Uh, That's um, no disrespect to her or Honorable Elijah Muhammad or anybody. They did their job. They served their purpose. I have no hatred for nothing. Yeah. I I don't have no hatred for none of that, bro. No, this chick, uh, Elijah Muhammad talked about reincarnation. A lot, all the stuff that she's saying that's not in the Quran is in the Quran. She probably just don't read it at, read it in the original form. Uh, you need to get the well, books. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't read it. And then it's in the Bible, too. It's in the Bible and the Quran. As a matter of fact, if I if I was still studying the Quran, I could show you. I, I remember, used to remember the exact verse and the exact verse in the Bible. Well, it's all good. You know, like me, like I was trying to t- tell them, I don't, like my mind used to be stuck in books for over 20 years. And um, the books didn't get me into nothing but debates and arguments. Mm-hmm. They weren't beneficial to me if I wasn't exercising and using the information in the book to put it forth to physical use. So if I couldn't use it physically to help build something, construct something, design something, craft something, it didn't do me any good. I looked up 20 years, 25 years later and found out where I had gotten and I hadn't moved anywhere physically. When I should have been letting the woman lead me on intelligence or finances in this system that deals with liquid and liquid is her element. Money. Women know how to lock it down because it's designed for them, not us. It's designed for women because it comes with male faces on it because the men that protect and provide for women now are Caucasian males. So I don't don't listen to books. Not anymore. I did, though. I listened to all Mm. of everything. I believed a lot of stuff. I lived off of a lot of stuff. My psyche has been shaped and shifted over a large amount of time, but it don't take me that long to figure out what's in control. And it's not a God from a book. 
It's not. It's not no being from a book in control of none of this. Those are just examples of us, how far we've come. Stories of remembrance of how far we've come. We give all attributes to the unknown force called Allah, but Allah is nothing more than the breath. It's the wind and the air itself that I keep teaching about. That's the universal mental reservoir that we all pull from to even have an idea. You think I could think that reincarnation is real if it wasn't in the gases to think? It's already present to think it. It is. It's already present to think it. I would not be able to think it if it wasn't in the elements to breathe in. I wouldn't even have a brain to process the imagery if it didn't exist. I'm letting everybody know about this thing so that we can break it open. Why? Why you want to mess up the church's money, somebody might ask. Because the church ain't doing right. They're not. They're not doing the people right. They're feeding off of the people. They're parasitic at this point. That's fact. So I'm trying to kill off the parasites. That's what a vampire hunter does. Anything living off the life force of another is a parasite. A parasite in transition or evolution became carnivores. Carnivores live off the blood and essence of another life. Parasites want to live too. So you can't tell a parasite it can't live off of you because it needs to live. Therefore, what it's doing is not wrong to it. You can't tell Caucasians they the devil and they don't deserve to be the devil and live as the devil if that's what they are. You can't tell them that. They're going to do it and they have been doing it and there's nothing you and I can do about it except for create distance. Now, we don't want to do that because they make the money. And if you wonder why, like I said again, sister, this is not an attack on you. I just don't want you to think that a book is going to revert me back to spells. I'm not under any religious spells anymore. I broke free of that, you know, and I'm not going back. I'm not going up under the suppression of any more gods and make believe forces that somebody else has to tell me about. Like I can't think for myself. I don't need nobody to tell me about Allah. I went and read about and learned about the whole force and everything, and I know enough about breath now to tell you that's what they was talking about from jump. Wait up. (laughs) Real talk. Always been talking about breathing and how important breathing is and breathing is light. And without breath, you don't have a heartbeat. You can't move. You can't do nothing. And then when you pass on, the breath breath is squeezed, compressed out of the body. And one last Exhale. And I said in the crumb. Yeah, like a drop. Squeeze every last drop of your breath out. And when that happens, you defecate and urinate on yourself. So all of the defiling comes out of you. It's pressed out. Compression takes place. After compression takes place, dehydration takes place of the blood. The blood starts to coagulate, dry up within the body. If you don't get the organs and things out of the body soon enough, the parasites will come out of the organs. See? Because your body is a vessel that sustains more than one life form. We just don't want to sustain all them life forms. How selfish of us, right? We don't like to give. But we like to give with expectations to get. (laughs) And it's all right. Because what goes around do come around and the wind tells you that, the earth tells you that, the spin of everything tells you that. That's the flow of energy. Flow of energy moves in a spiral because energy has to feed upon other energy and produce other energy. So it keeps spinning because when you stir something up, you're mixing it up. You ever stir something in a pot in your kitchen? Right. You got to Get the taste right. So you stir, you add ingredients, you taste. What makes us think that the universal mental reservoir that is the wind that spirals around the whole globe 
circumnavigates the planet before any other force can. It's the wind. Wind is an all-knowing force. And it's an everywhere at all times force. See? So it's omnipresent and omniscient. And it's all powerful too because nothing moves without the force of the wind. Therefore, it's omnipotent. Wind. How many people can shoot it? Kill it? You see? Trap it. You can only hold on to it for a little while. Right. I remember I got that little, uh, remember uh, old Shady. Old Shady said that to me on the phone call one time. It made, it was interesting. You know, every now and then he shocked me by saying something super uh, you know, mm. enlightening. So he would say that, and he said that, and I said, dang, you're right. You can't hold on to your breath. But I didn't just listen. I investigated, researched, and went on a quest to find out about breath. Yeah. I didn't just leave it there. I never leave anything where it is. I got to move with it or move it out my way. <laughs> and I'll move with it until it gets in my way, and then I'll move it out my way. Now, other people would be like, you can't move that out of your way. You got to stay leaving that in your way for the rest of your life. And I'll be like, no, because I don't need it to move. I don't need this intelligence or this knowledge that comes from this book to become my walker. See, babies use walkers and old people, they need walkers. I don't need one yet. I'll lean on the book when my mental faculties start slipping so much that I can't remember. And right now, I've been taught enough through the books to gather enough information and awareness that nature is where all of the knowledge from the book manifested from. It's called inspiration. Right. Spire, spirit. See, spiral. Spear. Spar, spare. Can you spare some change, sir? So I'm telling you right now, inspiration is what allows us to write those books. The breath, breathing, the spirit is in the air. You hear people going, you're not spiritual. Lady, there's no way I can be breathing and not be. Where you think the spirit comes from or comes through to get inside your body? It has to go through a plethora of events first to get to you as what you're calling spirit. Now you can call it spirit and be exotically infatuated with the terminology spirit. It's got power to it, you know. Like that dude, that the, the cussing pastor I posted on, on my channel where I'd be joking. He said he came or comes in the, uh, what he said, the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he'll cuss, out, and he'll cuss out any woman that called and try to tell him he need to shut up and sit down somewhere. <laughs> that dude be going in. He told her, and this is disrespectful as all get out. She checked him on it too. And, you know, sisters, sisters be having you know, they're fighting them like, like Zach met. They're not about to let you talk to them in your kind of way, nor should they. So a sister was like, you ain't my daddy. And that nigga said, how you know I ain't your daddy? <laughs> and then he said, and then I showed bruh, Dick Gregory come in and say what he said. And then the brother came back after Dick Gregory said, huh? The brother came back and said, huh? <laughs> I lined it up just right. And then he said, I come in the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas like that can call on the Holy Spirit for power and they're on te live television cussing you out. What you think the Spirit is? It's flowing through everybody. And it ain't no rules on who can use the breath to, to say what they want to say. People act like it's rules. You can't say that. I said, well, the gas has allowed me to do it. Hmm? How you going to tell me I can't say it in the flesh? And you ain't even aware the gases are in control of the mentality or the mental or how anybody thinks, the gases. So you're mad at me for saying it, but I'm allowed to. 
Now it's energy that comes out of what I'm saying, which means anybody that's a fanatic will be hurt by what I'm saying. And they'll say, this brother has to be stopped. Why? Why you wanna cut my power off? You think I'm cutting your power off? Then it becomes a tit for tat. Well, you can't stop an idea, brother. What I'm teaching is not me. It's an idea that comes through me from the mental reservoir. I was pushed on this path by the wind a long time ago. The wind is guiding and pushing everything. As Soon as I was given a body full of sails, my body set sail. See, the wind is still moving the sails. So I've been guided to learn all this stuff, put it all together, meet the people I met, meeting my brother, young elder, meeting Shady Brady, meeting Dr. York, uh, or, or meeting the information that the Nuwapian family put out, meeting the, the Muslims that gave me, you know, the, your, my first paper and, and, and started teaching me about uh, Allah and, and Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X and all these, and Dr. Khaled Muhammad, the great leaders, Minister Farrakhan, these are great people to me. I don't have any disrespect towards them and why, and why they kept this discipline to guide them in their life. They felt like they needed it. And if I felt like I needed something, I would try to convince you too that you need it. That's just natural. Really? You know it. I, it's natural. I'm sitting up here. If, you know, what's the name? Might do a little meth every, you know, when he does it, but he'll convince you, you need meth too. He don't want to be alone. A person smoking weed will try to pass you the blunt so you can hit it. A person that drinks liquor will try to get you, a, give you a shot. Here, you want a shot? You want something to drink? What you drink? What's your poison? They don't want to be alone. Nobody likes the feeling of aloneness. So they call for energies that are like theirs that they can sustain and maintain. They want to be brothers with that energy. It's a likeness to it. But opposites attract. So usually those negative energies attract positive energies. And the positive energy has a hard time breaking away from the negative influence, especially if the negativity is more magnetic. So you find yourself trapped. And I was stuck to a negative energy for a whole year. Put my family through a lot. Following following what? The Quran. Not following my own heart and my own brain. Like I didn't have the power to think for myself. They take that power away from you. Religious leaders will take it from you. The minute you start thinking for yourself, they get defensive. A man should not lean unto his own understanding. What? <laughs> That's the most funny. <laughs> be a dumbass pretty much you should be a dumbass and do what i tell you because <laughs> if you don't i can't get nothing out of you i need you to be dumb carnivores need rabbits to be stupid so they eat good with the least amount the least amount of energy spent they're like i ain't gotta go hunting it if it falls for my trap I can set a trap, then go on by my business, and the rabbit will fall in my trap, then I got food. That's what they do. They set traps. Those of us that are kind-hearted and, and borderline uh, too nice and gullible, like I used to be. I used to be that way. But I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. I'm an omnivore. I'm not a carnivore. Carnivores took advantage of me. And they will continue to do so as long as I allow it till I fight back. See, when I start fighting back or when anybody that's an omnivore starts to fight back, the carnivore can't understand where you got the power from. They be like, what? What you mean? Like what's they said, he just said he loved me last week. Now he, they just ran off. They must have cloned him. It's a clone. They start making up stuff. Like, right, bro, while I make up my mind and what I want to do with my life, it doesn't mean I'm cloned. Don't I have free will to make my own decisions? Well, I'm not going to ask you that as a question. That's a rhetorical question. Yes, I do. 
why would I give that answer to anybody else to answer for me? For real. If you ask any man, hey, uh, don't I make my own decisions? You don't tell me what to do, do you? They might look at you and go, hell yeah, boy, you can't breathe unless I tell you to. And you'll be mad. But you set yourself up for that. Don't ask nobody no question about who run your life. You know you run it, and everybody else knows they run it. The image of God and the devil don't even run your life. Because all you do is do what you want and then go ask for forgiveness anyway. So who's really in charge? You think forgiveness really absolves you of what you did? <laughs> hey, good thing. Yo. Hey, how you doing, bro? I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Give me a second. Oh, hi, 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 hi. I thought you got cut out. That's somebody called, uh, called you or something. Oh, yeah. They, they, they say you going in 15, you cracking heads and twisted caps. Uh, I think we over the mark now, though. We like 12, we like 12.30 in the game now. Yeah, we can shut it down. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. I'm about to, we're going to have to get back uh, tomorrow. For what, tomorrow, I got uh, Ward Hayes, and then the, I think sometime this week I'm going to be on Black Magic Show. So, uh, yeah, so Black Magic on, uh, he, he, I'm waiting to get in touch with him now, and I'm supposed to be going on his show. Uh, okay, that'll work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on busy because uh, I got to do two classes tomorrow. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of stuff, man, this whole week. But these two classes, that we do we do double headers. We hit these we hit them with double headers. So they if, if you're just like coming on to this class, we got 260 people. Hey, I uh I post 15. I'm gonna post 15 uh page in the links. You want to go over and subscribe to the 15 Elder page. Also, if you want to show him some love on the donations, we dropped it. He don't do it for money, but you know what I'm saying? We we do we do we if you want to show us some love, you know, throw him a dollar or something, whatever. We ain't we ain't you know, it ain't no big deal. Uh what else I was gonna say? Um yeah, man, we got more classes coming out. We like a uh a freight train with the brakes tow off of it, enjoy. Running fast, we running right head on straight into the future, bro. You know what I'm saying? From, from right from now, right now, we going right into the future right now. You know what I'm saying? We we on one of them goddamn Mark 15 train levitating trains going right into the future, man. With the information, man. Some of the stuff 15 saying they'll come back to it a little later. I, I think they probably pretty much I think some of them people getting it a little bit more now. But at least we got it in the archive. Oh yeah, I know they're getting it. I know yeah, they're getting it. Yeah, yeah, they I wouldn't respond the way they do because they they got to break that uh, religious spell. So they'll try to defend themselves with it first. But somebody that knows nature and science will shatter that shit. You can't come into nature and science with religion. Yeah. It doesn't hold up. Yeah, and that's sad. That's sad that we still getting attacked. They say, "Oh yeah." Well, the, my Quran don't say nothing about that. I don't care if I see the grass is green. I'm looking at grass is green in nature. But I don't care about that. The Quran say grass is blue. See, that type of mentality is a whole nother level of psychology right there, man. When you read the Bible or the book or some book and it says that, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, monkey ass is gray. But then you looking at a monkey ass in physical form and it's, you know, it's pale looking. And you say, well, I see how they could have said that was great. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got to right. take face value for what the hell you read. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You know? I mean, I mean, because think before the movies came out, it was the imagination of the reading. Mm -hmm. When people read books, they could visualize. Mm -hmm. So you can go on a journey reading the book. You can literally dive into the imagination of reading a book and lose yourself in it. Like the movie uh, Never End the Story tells you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Receipt. Okay. Yeah, the Never End the Story movie shows you. As long as dude was reading the story, thanks. his imagination was coming up with everything. So he yeah. could visibly engage himself as, uh, what's that being, a trail, and live out a trail. A trail is literally another word for like saying, a journey or a road, a trail, a path, a, a quest, right? You're on a quest. 
So he was on a quest to find out the meaning of life, for real, for real. But they show it in a different expression. And then in the thing that was taking everything away in the movie was called the nothing. The nothing. Wow. Literally, air is considered nothing. But right. we still come in contact with it and it come in contact with us and everything else. So it is considered nothing. The nothing will build it everything and the nothing will take everything away. But we learned from, you know, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, shady, that nothing is still a thing. Yeah. Right? right. So I'm all, I, I can make reference to just that point, even though I don't, you know, use most. I don't use his shit. I don't. That's his perspective. Things are things. I don't think he made that up out of nowhere. I think that's part of scientific expression on life. Things are things. For somebody, man, he got like somebody passed it down to him. He passed it to us. So hey, yeah, yeah, Yeah. and that's what energy does. Yeah, pass on, rub off. You know, so. But yeah, you know, I hope I hope I spoke enough, and I appreciate everybody's listening here. Heads and twist cap. And popped out eyeballs and niggas <laughs> going down the street and exploded. All kind of shit was going on on this joint. Tell him. Yeah, crazy. big bro. Yeah, but I'll I be hey, hey, like I say, y'all, I'm going to be back tomorrow, man. I got some five tapes coming out tomorrow. We're going to turn up a notch. And uh, like I say, uh, wait on to get the brother Black Magic. Shout out to brother Black Magic, man. Wait on the brother Black yeah. Magic. Shout get- out to uh, brother Rich. Yeah, brother Rich gonna have me. Uh, he gonna have me on the show, man. So uh, I can't wait to do that. Uh, and I can't, can't wait to see what topic that he picked. Cause I'm cracking heads and twisting. I'm telling him my, my shit gonna get five hundred thousand plays. I'm gonna be the first nigga with five hundred thousand plays on this. Shit. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, yeah. we about to get out of here. Uh, fifteen. We appreciate you for coming out and kicking it with us. We on we on the right, night. Appreciate shift. you. We get a night shift. Uh, so we crack right. heads twice back to back. And we about to get up out of here. We'll be back, y'all. 15, gonna be back. We're gonna come, we, we finna come up with another topic for y'all uh, coming up. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna hit you with double headers every time. You know how we do it. So we out, man. Peace and love. Positive vibrations. Uh, where y'all go to your, to your fourth dimension when you transition to the fourth dimension for your shadow hour or your dreams. Just, uh, just take some deep breaths exercises before you go in. Go into the fourth dimension. Take you a couple deep breaths. Clean your lungs out. You know what I'm saying? So you can go into the fourth dimension breathing good. You know what I'm saying? Slowing your, uh, get into that vibration, you know? So we out of here, man. Islam, peace, hotel, Ashug, divine love throughout the balance universe to all. Wadu. That's right. Wadu.